We're live, right? Yeah, cool. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was waiting for the ref. Vloggy did the most like, oh, no, no, we normally chat shit yeah, and then yeah, we do the that's riff. That's okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to open this by asking you to look at the mark on my face, but then actually it's kind of faded. But can you see that? A little bit. That's Keenan's foot last night. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shall I introduce it? Yeah, we'd let you. Fuck it. I just did what you did on stage. What? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was cringing about that this morning. Uh, for, for context, we went to a gig last night with, with, uh, well, okay, all right. Reverse. <laughs> Merch podcast. Thank you, et cetera. Chris Grant, Parkour UK. Hello. We're going to get into that stuff, but we went to a gig last night. Uh, who do we see? Landmarks. Landmarks. It was land. You know? Do you know why? It's Landmark. You yeah. know why it's landmark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, Keelan Krauslov kicked me in the face. It was great. Yep, yeah, I stood at the back and had a beer and just watched. It I, was I, lovely. The, but the, it, what Keelan was just referencing is we got on stage. Bloggy hasn't heard this story actually. This was fucking horrific. I Krauslov once. It was great. It went well. You know, you land, you jump into the crowd and then the chorus kicks in and you're on top of people and you're like, yeah, and you feel wicked. And then me and Keelan got on the stage because they were like inviting people up. And uh, then the song kind of went into like a, a pre-breakdown lull. And yep. you want to wait until the big drop before you jump into the crowd, right? And the, the stage manager's come out and he's like tapping us on the back being like, get the fuck off the stage. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. So me and Keenan just kind of <laughs> bobbed there next to the lead singer waiting for the like, I don't know what it was. Like, D-o-no-no-no-no. and then it, as it dropped, and I, in the build up to it dropping, I just looked out into the crowd and I didn't know what to do. And I went. And I gave the fucking rock. What are they? Is that devil horns? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Classic drills. You good? Ooh. <laughs> Not was, that guy. It was funny. It was like very polite British crowd suffering from the back. Like people would get up on the stage and go nuts for a minute and then like politely make sure everyone was safe before they jumped up. Yeah. 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 yeah it, was very, than, it was really nice. Was rather like, than the like hardcore yeah, crowd yeah. where you're just like crowd killing. <laughs> yeah. Fuck good. that clip of. Um, Danger Escape Plan. Danger Escape Plan, where he's just yeah. running across heads. So if uh, people what? have to look that up, if you just search for Dillinger Escape Plan live in Virgin Megastore, it's like 2004. Yeah. Just leave it, because I think if we explain it, it ruins. It's like, so sick. Yeah. So sick. So that that was a nice time last night. That was good That time. was. We've, we've, yeah, we've discovered that. a sharing of a love of metal. Yeah. 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 And you Definitely. love Sleep Token, which is the intro oh, to that man. as well. Yeah. I think I'm the biggest sleep talking fan in the room. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Apart from, your, apart from your wife, who isn't here, but yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. she's definitely more the biggest. She bought. Well, we said this last night, right? She went to the merch stand at Sleep Token, and they were like, "What would you like?" And she was just like, "Everything in a large, please." <laughs> and the woman was like, "Do you mean a t-shirt?" And she was like, "No, a, a, one of each, thank you." <laughs> like, and then she's Amazing. walking about the gig with like all these, like a like I'm, a mum coming push back that from closer to your next. mouth. Oof. Anyway, that's amazing. All good. Yeah. Mm. yeah, just keep that close to your mouth. Otherwise, it gets a bit roomy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that sounds all right. So, you're here. Where do we start? <sighs> Fucking hell. Well, I mean, I just, I prefer to, you, you had a metal story. We could talk about that. <laughs> oh, we did start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or, or we save that for the end because yeah, that's yeah, normally yeah. when people get turned off and we talk about music. Because we've got more important things to do. Yeah, let's like, see if the metal story comes. It was just about discovering You're here in a branded t shirt. I, like, I mean, you've got. I'd brand the trouble. t-shirt i hope the boss is watching i like to be fair i really like the fit of these t-shirts they are nice not that we have any for sale the but. boss was meant to be here as well but i'm glad he yeah. isn't because we would have had no, to actually was. clean <laughs> and remove all the fly traps mm. dan's gonna be listening and judging the room so I know. You, can, you can only see this corner of this but it's tidy oh bloggy's yeah. yeah there's flies, yeah, flies, flies everywhere flies everywhere everywhere it's horrible mm. Apart um, from on all of the unsold, shiny, lovely t-shirts, there's no flies on there, guys. Oh, no, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, it's, all yeah. it's all in the mess <laughs> while I'm doing my work. It's great. Yeah. Something's Maybe died. Maybe it's you, Bloggy. Something's yeah. died somewhere. Have you just got something rotting in a bin? I hope not. <laughs> no, they they, they seem to crowd around my plants, so maybe it's that. Maybe it's you. you got, yeah, p- fly plants. Fly traps. Mm. Or maybe it's Bloggy. Maybe he's rotting. Maybe. Maybe I'm dying. Yeah. To be fair, it's probably my fucking protein farts have, have oh, welcomed oh, the yeah, meme. You kind of smell like a sweaty fat kid eating sweets. When yeah. You oh, I've cut that out now. I know what that was. I've stopped that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> You've got to learn. Yeah. Um, so why are we drinking Iron Brew? So, well, it's not even. What is yeah, it? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's I mean, different. Like, yeah, I'll give you the whole. It feels like I think people from Glasgow will be happy and insulted. 
Yeah, so, it, because it's not it, in a glass bottle. Would it have been worse if we'd gone, he's Scottish, let's get iron uh, brew to make him feel at home? I would have been okay with that. Okay. I would have been <laughs> to that. So there was a big uh, drama in Scotland about maybe three or four years ago, ago now because Iron Brew changed the recipe. Yeah. And the funny thing is people noticed it before they announced it. So people were like tweeting them saying, my Iron Brew is wrong. <laughs> That's <fucking laughs> and then hilarious. I think it's a bit of a marketing thing. They've now got like Iron Brew 1901. And I just noticed there's quite often drinks in the podcast. So I thought I'll br- carry these all the way from Glasgow. <laughs> Although we had to open them over the sink. Yeah, because they exploded. That's and it's too much sugar for one day. But um, there we go. Wait, so this is 1901. So this is so a different it's recipe. The, it's the original recipe. And then they have another one. Yeah, but, but so like, not in a glass bottle, which is the problem. I see. I've never even seen it in a glass bottle, Neither. but I haven't had Iron Brew probably for about five years. So does that mean that this will taste exactly uh, what I expected uh, to? Yeah, yeah. So for mm. you, so they've just hipstered it. You've just got a different brand, and yeah, it is quite hipster, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they've. I, I reckon it was all big. Oh, bloggy! Is that your phone? <laughs> oh, good. Very unprofessional. They know what they're doing, Iron Brew. I think there's some funky fact about like Iron Brew. Scotland's the only country that sells Coca Cola, where Coca Cola is not. The, the biggest top. sale, something like that, where wow. it's not the biggest selling drink because it's Iron Brew. Wow. It just anyway. tastes like sweets. I am. I love it. Shaming and reducing the depth of my culture right now by just talking about yeah. Iron Brew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they've taken like a bag of Harry Bow and blended it. It's full on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Am I going to, I mean, we're all a little bit shaky and hungover. Is this going to send me over the edge? Uh, listen, I had two beers. I feel fixed. good. I'm good. I'm absolutely fine. But Wait, well, it just we gives you some sugar. Like, we were fairly drunk morning. when we first met you last night, if you had I was absolutely behaving. I'm on a work trip. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go out. It was very, very good to hang out and get to a gig. It was. Mm-hmm. You anyway. Need to, you need to return the yeah. favour and... Yeah, Show man, us anytime. the way to some bands that we haven't seen as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, do. Well, I know, I'm, I've, I've, I've worked out the segue. Uh, well, well, you, you've, I love this because Robbie says oft. Oft. oft, that's oft. A, that's What's oft? Robbie always says know, oft. It means like, wow. I don't know. It's like a Scottish noise. Oh, like, like, it's a Scottish noise. Uh, yeah, oft. Does it, doesn't have a translation. I oft. Don't think. Oh, oft. <laughs> um, I've got the segue because, because Chris will brought us a pint last night. And the reason he did that is because he's got fucking 1.5 million <laughs> just chilling in his bank account. Okay. Yeah, um, very good. So, yeah, like, let's, let's just clarify that. Yeah, the, the, the professional hat comes yeah, 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 totally. cut, cut for Instagram. So, uh, yeah, the news is now out mm. that we, uh, after a lot of work from a lot of people, um, Parker UK has 1.575 million to spend over the next five years. It, it's a little bit less flashy than it sounds in the sense that like it's spread out over five years and it's not like you get a big fancy check yeah you start buying people beer giles um <laughs> but uh yeah so that i mean that's like i mean that's obviously like a huge injection of potential effort and time from people so um, it, yeah i mean that's this it, that's basically what this podcast is kind yeah. of to talk about isn't it yeah. not that we do you know press related podcasts <laughs> we just we normally have fun but yeah. um what how does that happen why does that happen well should we sh- sh- yeah well, why, I mean, why does, yeah right because okay. I, I, i'm going to speak for people who don't understand that so okay. we need to almost all. rewind even past that point and say where is Parkour UK been? What yeah. is Parkour UK? What yeah. does Parkour UK do? Yeah. Fuck, where to start? Okay, so... Um, <laughs> we'll do, like, the whirlwind version up to 2020 because that was when I started working. And that's when and, shit got real. And it sort of got to move a bit more. That's so when you made pre, it cool. I don't know. Pre, <laughs> pre-2020, um, Parkour UK was set up... I don't even know the numbers, right? I always get it wrong. It was, like, between 2012 and 2014 ish might even be a little bit earlier so i'm sorry for the people listening that know this stuff um it was, it was partly because like that was when the coaching scene was getting going and the credibility was really low who actually started um so eugene minogue who was the chair yeah, okay. dan edwards from parker generations and yeah. a few people around that um so it was kind of a response to trying to get a bit of like credibility among like schools sports centers all that sort of stuff so that people could start coaching and um, it's it's a governing body yeah it's a governing body um and that's the kind of normal formal middle of the road generic way that sports do it and obviously parker is different but if you play that game a little bit there's advantages to it so over like four or five years eugene in particular did painful amounts of paperwork to get the sport recognized yeah, um, which officially, was which is a huge, huge deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't quite know the story, but my understanding is it's like the first new sport to be recognised in twenty or thirty years, and the way the process of recognition was so old that Eugene had to help them write 
rewrite the process before they could even apply. Wow. And also he got it recognised by all four of the UK sports bodies. So this was happening oh, in nice. England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Yeah, I mean, it was um, a fucking big deal, wasn't it? Yeah, so, so that happened. And, and really the thing about that is that unlocks the key to... Uh, like support and infrastructure which might seem a little bit sort of um governmental or corporate but it is there mm. and and i think there's lots of people in parkour who could dip their toes in that game and get support right or get a little bit of money for projects and that sort of stuff and i think uh, as a community not enough of us recognize that so for example giles the year that you came up to roots movement in glasgow which i think was 20 12? 11 or 12 that, yeah I think 12 maybe. 4 or 5k of the budget for that came out of Glasgow City Council yeah mm. right because we kind of worked out how to justify what we were doing um, so Parker UK did that um, it's fair to say like there was a bit of a rocky relationship with a lot of the community for lots of good reasons and lots of bad reasons and I think um, that's way before I was around fortunately because I would imagine it was quite stressful mm. and then mm. Eugene finished up as CEO like 2019 there was a sort of board put in place and Dan Newton started as the CEO, who's the new big boss man. Yep. Uh, he's from a sports development background. Um, he's got those, that part of the sector connections down really well. Um, and then some money landed from Sport England in the beginning of 2020 and they brought on me and Omar Jackson. Yep. You might know, he hangs about with the fat guys and stuff a lot. Yeah. Um, and we also have Kieran Wilde who runs Aspire Parker as well now doing a bit. Um, and that was it. And then, the last like what is it 18 months um to be totally honest there's been a little bit of like i don't think we were at ground zero i think we were below the ground hmm. right what, in terms of community or like <laughs> everything so one of the one of this kind of metaphors that i was using when i started was like so i've just really quickly for context i've had a few years out of parker so i used to run quite a big coaching organization um that took me and some of my guys all over the world. Which I mean, you're great. just real quick. Your background is like, I mean, you're OG parkour, Scottish parkour. Same as you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you've been around yeah. since kind of day one yeah. of, of England. Um, and yeah, you were predominantly what coaching and stuff back in the day. And yeah, then. I mean, I guess I got deep into that world quite quickly. Um, and yeah, I mean, I started in 2004. By 2008, I was offered a contract with National Theatre Scotland to do a big bunch of projects with parkour in them for like six months. And then I used that time and that money to then set up like a company and then we just did stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of another story. But when I stopped doing that, um, I went away and worked in like youth and community work and a little bit of sports development. And I remember Jimmy J Jimmy the Giant saying this, that like one of the best things he did for parkour was to go and work somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that the unlock of understanding that there's this big infrastructure out there that some of it is annoying and some of it is a problem mm. and like people get into parkour because they don't want that structure but at the same time there's 1.575 million pounds <laughs> out there yeah yeah yeah. anyway so so fast forward to 2020 we started um the kind of big image i've been using is like it was a little bit like going into like a metaphorical office where the lights have been off for two years mm -hmm. and like the guys that had been there before had done a really good job of keeping it turning, but none of them could put proper time into it because it wasn't their jobs. Mm, yeah. Um, and so just like getting really- So was there like a salary for people like Eugene back? Uh, I think I think he maybe got like a bit of a retainer, but he had a full-time job. He's yeah, a he, sports development officer for Westminster Council. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right, okay. Mm. So it was no one's real focus. I think the biggest thing is like, I feel like the average sort of parkour practitioner in the UK Kind of, if you said like, what does Parkour UK do? They'd go, yeah. well, like, is it is it a government body? Is it a council? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't. I, even yeah. now, I don't know how I would say it. What I don't even do. know what a government well, body is. Really. I've got the perfect image for you that I came up with on my whiteboard last week. To oh. it. So, quietly skipping forward, we've kind of managed to get to a baseline where we know what relationships we have and we don't have. And there's quite a few that we don't have, which is okay. I think we've built a lot more. Like, you guys in particular have been really accommodating at just hanging out and chatting. Um, so governing body is really official a governing body and like swimming for example would look after like the safety of swimming pools the coaches uh like olympic pathways all that sort of like bureaucracy and office stuff mm. is, is a governing body it. always linked to like the literal council and government like that structure or um, could i go oh i'm the governing body of like i don't know so just some something like can you just yeah. can can you make a load of mates and say oh we're the well, governing like, body as a brand like 
instead of yeah. saying brand, you're like, I'm the government. government. Uh, not necessarily, but I just mean like, does it always have to be linked? Because obviously the way that you've got funding and things is through like the government, but yeah. and it's so therefore you get this kind of like, oh, it, the government. Yeah, yeah, but totally. like, Yeah, so the, the short answer is yes, but I think you need to build that up. Um, yeah. So technically our money comes from the government because Department of Culture and Media will give the money to Sport England every year and sp and Sports Scotland in Scotland and there's like a similar infrastructure and then they dish out the money but they dish out the money to recognise sports. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you and don't get yeah. yeah. part, yeah. right? Um, so, but I think governing is the wrong word for all the reasons that you've just kind of said that like it sounds very formal and official. It sounds like we are big decision makers and all that and actually my view would be is that we're a community organization that's the language i would use so yeah. if you imagine this is my this is my little image you ready i wish we had a whiteboard um so i want you to imagine like the whole of the parker community represented by like a line of 100 people right so one end might be like i don't know no competition the other end might be competition every day one yeah. end might be flips it doesn't matter what whatever spectrum of opinion that you want right mm. and they're standing on the parker field of dreams and they're all at one end of the field facing the other end trying to get there so for you that could be like getting motus further down the line releasing saul getting your brand further it could be like a new coach anything yeah, like that. yeah so it's right? like everyone's trying to progress but right. parker you care standing at the other end right or frantically walking up and down the line and our job's to kind of try and move people forward yeah right? nice. so for some people that could be right you need some qualifications because the schools won't let you in so let's see what we can do over there and you move those people forward a little bit and then maybe like you have a film festival and we go do you know what there might be some money for that in the arts council i wonder if we can connect you with a funder and help you write an application yeah so you're over somewhere else in the line and we try and pull you forward a little bit now what happens sometimes and has definitely happened to us is people step back as well mm. so we do something that puts a barrier in the way like we make a mistake but i think that's a really good way to think about it because what you always get is a forward direction. Yeah. Right? Mm. But the challenge is that the people on one side can only see what's on the left and the right. Mm -hmm. So so people can feel unheard, they can feel left behind. And it's just a huge task. Yeah, right? yeah. And so that's the way that I like to think about it. And then what that also makes you realize is like, not everyone will progress at once or not everyone needs the help, right? So mm. there might be people on the line who are like, just coming forward on their own and we can just be like cool can we tell your story for you yeah like, yeah yeah you know and then there might be people who can't start but they can't see the people that are on the other side of the line moving forward and so trying to work right across the community and i think that's almost a bit of a a shift of focus for parker uk i think it was very heavily focused on that like governing infrastructure qualifications that's still there but to be fair most of the gyms don't need us mm. and i don't want people to need us i want them to be with us right yeah and i think a lot of the gyms are just brilliant successful businesses and you know if we've helped them get their qualifications great but if they can function without us and parkour is getting out there then awesome you need you know? to take like a little smidge of that money and go to like <laughs> fiverr or find an animator in the in the parkour world and get like a little 30 second infographic made up with a nice voiceover a nice kind of like Parkour UK has set yeah, out yeah, to do totally. this and it, and it and explains that and then yeah. you just have yeah. that and then people are like what's Parkour UK and you're like that, that. Yeah. because it is it, I mean that does make a huge amount of sense and actually it's like suddenly I have a much clearer picture in my head and mm. now I can yeah yeah and I think in terms of the money so like it's worth giving the credit for this you were saying like how does the money arrive mm -hmm. so once you're in the door of these infrastructures, it's easier to stay in, Yeah. right? So we went from one year of funding to one year of funding again at the same level to five. Yeah. Mm. And that's the point where you're starting to make the argument with Sport England, this is successful. We've now recognized that having three staff in place is like moved a lot of people in that line, mm. but we can't plan more than a year ahead because we're only like- Cause you, yeah, you don't- so know. I've had two occasions where my job could have ran out. Yeah. I mean, I didn't feel like that, but that, that's a total possibility, right? Is yeah, that the yeah. money just stops. So we've got this money now. We kind of get to decide broadly how we split it up over the five years. Mm. Um, and I think the, the biggest part of it, which has really proved itself in the last 18 months, is people, mm. right? And I think there's two big reasons for that. One, people can just concentrate on it. Like if, if you email me and ask me something, 
it's my job to answer. Mm. I don't have other work. Well, I've got lots of work to do, but my job is to be there. We right? do. I did yeah. have a message from Clayton Abbott saying, can you send him his uh, oh, did they? <laughs> level one coaching stuff? Clayton, I told it. you to chase me. So <laughs> he's, he's stuck in the line shit. Um, yeah, and, and one of the things is like, at a very baseline level, which I appreciate is not enough, people can actually ask a question now and try and get an answer, yeah. which is quite mm. a lot of progress in itself. So the money gets divided up like that. Um, and then some of it is just spent on like just stuff, right? Yeah. So like we need to pay taxes and we need to buy laptops and we need to travel, no. like, you know, all that stuff. I mean, um, barley was excessive, but you look good with a tan. Yeah, exactly. So. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's the outline. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah. The, the big thing for me that I always push back on is this idea that like it needs to be about really tight infrastructure like if people have got stuff they want to do let us deal with like mm. that side of it because it's frustrating and it takes expertise that i don't think really that many people in the parker community including myself have yeah mm. um but the last thing i would say about the money is it, it was a year's worth of writing the funding application it mm. wasn't like you put in a page and you say can we get the money please it was like sport england actually were amazing it was the best funding process i've been part of in my non parkour career like yeah, doing yeah. other stuff but you meet with them every few weeks you tell them what you want to do they come back and they challenge it and mm. um, you meet with other national governing bodies because sport england also don't care about only you yeah. yeah so they are looking at like i don't know however much money they have as a portfolio and they've got their version of that line mm -hmm. and parkour needs to try and be like we should be a bigger yeah part yeah. of that line but football is going well wait a minute yeah what, you know and there's this playoff but they've been really good. I mean, they've invested quite a lot in other lifestyle sports as well. Now. How how do you kind of at the end of this five years or as the time goes on and how does Sport England like quantify success? That's like the biggest question ever. It's good. So I think um, it'll be a mix of like kind of obvious measurements. Yeah. Right? So we might make a commitment every year to say like on the qualification side, we're looking to uh, qualify 200 people. Yeah. And we know that those 200 people will connect with a thousand people or whatever. And you can kind of extrapolate all that. Yeah. Like you got um, sort of very tangible numbers. Yeah, yeah. But I think um, that's part of the problem with national governing bodies is that participation isn't just bums on seats mm. or people in gyms. Right. So one of the arguments that we're making with them at the moment, or one of the, the things that we're pushing that they've been really receptive to is we've said that one of our outcomes over the next five years is going to be to redefine what participation means for oh, national okay. governing body, right? So, like, we were at that gig last night. Your buddy was there that loves Motus, mm, yeah. right? He might not do parkour, but he's connected to the community. Scotty T, by the way. Scotty Legend. T. Um, Shout out. Connected to the community. He's influenced by being around you guys. He wears the clothes. Yeah. He doesn't get counted into that. Yeah, people, because right? he doesn't actually train. Right. Mm. Uh, people that play Tony Hawk's know about skateboarding. Yeah. Mm. Right. So. But then where's the line? Because if you exactly. wear a thrasher hoodie, it doesn't mean you skate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. yeah so I don't thing. know the answer to that, but I think that's one of the things that we're doing that's quite exciting. So like, I think the qualifications in the gym side of it will improve, but it kind of takes care of itself now to some extent. Yeah. yeah. Especially once we get some more people to look after it, like it will grow. And for the people that are interested in that side of it, like we are, we're coming to the end of a very long and arduous redevelopment of our level two course. And like all of I that. I want to go onto that like properly yeah, in a bit. There's probably some good yeah. questions about that. Mm. Um, but all of the other bits are like a big question mark. I think that's ace. Yeah. Like mm. the first time we spoke and I was like, what do you think a national governing body could do for Motus? You were like, I don't know. Uh, but that wasn't threatening for me. I was like, mm. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we're kind of starting to have like a few little conversations, right? Well, like, I think also what's interesting is like you, I mean, like take the film festival, which I will be announcing. This is coming out today, actually. I'm releasing this tonight. Film festival's coming out next week, I've decided, because uh, I've got to do some website rejiggery. Um, but it's that kind of thing where like you, I, I was just talking to you about the film festival and you were like, oh, we could maybe like help you get funding yeah. to source like to do a screening mm. and things and That's it's those true. kind of things that doesn't it never pops into my head yeah. i look at that as a challenge and i'm like fuck i really want to do a screening like how are we gonna yeah. financially pull this off yeah. And then you're like, oh, you can probably get arts funding. And maybe, it's like, yeah. oh, what? So like, that's what people have in their heads, right? And it's a maybe, but it's like you have yeah. the sort of, it's the like, oh, we can help you try and come forward. Mm. That's, that's it. And I think that it's not, 
it's not ignorance in a bad way it's just living in your bubble right and like when I moved out of Parker we I was quite lucky because when I was coaching I was working with like National Theatre Scotland and the British Council and I was kind of I kind of understood where the money was coming from yeah Mm -hmm. like rather than it just landing in the bank account I was maybe involved in like they would come to me and say can you write a couple of paragraphs that justify this yeah so I had to be like okay well what is it that the British Council want so like I did work in the Caribbean and they um which is just lots of stories we could talk about but they they had really clear outcomes that they wanted and we were able to say we can do that for you but you have to be able to describe it Mm. and I think it's just lots of little pockets of that right you know and if if someone like you gets one opportunity from us in the next two years that wasn't there before great yeah yeah you know and if someone else is in contact with us every week great Mm. but that line is always going to flex and flux and move are there enough like in the last year or so do you feel like there have been enough people like reaching out for help or not like do people Um, because i i just wouldn't have actively thought that you could like even if somebody had said oh like i don't know somebody else who does parkour stuff whether it's i mean like gyms and coaching it's probably like okay maybe speak to parkour uk but there's a lot of other like so like little brands and stuff yeah Yeah, or like people trying to do i don't know other things and it's like yeah i would never think to go oh you should try and ask park uk they might be able to help but now now that i know this it's like okay it sounds like it's justified in in emailing like yeah yeah and and like the thing is well isn't that like i've made this commitment regularly is you'll get an answer it might not be the one you want yeah right so but one of the big things that i think is important for us where it's not been before and I think where people are still challenging is that thing of like giving politicians answers or not being transparent my personal view is that I think we're being quite transparent but clearly that's not cutting through mm. and that's still our problem right? yeah so if I feel like I'm walking up and down that imaginary line shooting my head off but someone in that line is like I still don't hear you that's still my responsibility well, I think start. the one mm. thing that definitely like you could uh sort of criticize Parkour UK for doing this is yeah as you said That's it's too burpy. i'm not going to drink it's, anymore oh yeah. i love I'm, I'm actually it's very nice i'm loving it that's jails this whole calories for the day yeah <laughs> it is it is burpy though but um the one thing i think you could kind of justifiably criticize proper uk for the last couple of years is like it kind of feels like there was just no output on terms of like oh we're parkour uk and we're trying to do this yeah. and now finally it does feel like Good. things are shifting and i mean so the thing we haven't mentioned is that with this 1.5 you guys are essentially creating more jobs yeah and there's what two three so lives three coming up just now yeah um it's going to be about seven or eight probably over the next year or so yeah like, i wouldn't want to make any solid commitments about when those are obviously just because it would be bonkers to try and recruit eight people yeah and there wouldn't be enough time to try and work with them to work out what their jobs are going to be yeah mm-hmm. yeah so um yeah. Do you want me to go through the jobs a little bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you may as well. Like, yeah. we, there's the yeah, and then we can probably actually move on to the next question, which is kind of related to that, actually. Yeah. So, um, so there's three jobs live right now until seventh of June, and these are live on the Parkour UK yeah. website. Parker, I, I'm assuming these are exclusive to UK people. Um, yeah. I mean, we've not really explored that in detail, but I would think right now it could be a challenge for us to. I think the person would need to live in the UK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think if they weren't from the UK, I don't have an answer. I think we could look at that. Don't yeah, yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they are remote jobs, but they will involve us getting together yeah. and like doing stuff like this. So mm. there's kind of a balance there. So there's three different jobs. I'll give you a really short lowdown because the information on them is out there in a big video now. Um, so there's a digital support role, which is like just the digital nuts and bolts. So socials, maybe some email marketing, um, helping just improve some of the systems. We've got a really good website company that we just need to spend more time with because there's no time. Um, and that's a really like community facing job. And also people will be able to see it already, but like we need to start making sure that we are communicating with and projecting right across that line. Yeah. So like we, we shared some stuff from Nova City during the competitions earlier in the year. Uh, we're still sharing stuff from the gyms. We're sharing lots, as much as we can at the moment. We're trying to push some women's stuff. like So that digital support job will be to kind of take that and just make it bigger. It's basically look at the line and, and almost yeah. tell stories from it. And like, because yeah. you were sharing like Callan's uh, mental health thing the other day, weren't you? That's and we'll, right. we'll go yeah. on to that in a bit because yeah. there's some exciting stuff there. Yeah. Um, um, and then the second job is like the workforce lead. So we have uh, 
someone in already kind of doing like the nuts and bolts of the workforce just organizing the courses i was so glad to hand that over like so that's like literal training courses like yeah. the yeah so contacting the tutors booking the courses putting the venues in place sending the certificates all that stuff it's quite an admin heavy job but the workforce lead who will be a team member with them because we're not going to work in much of a hierarchy their job will be a little bit more of like the strategy stuff of going like right we need to redevelop the level two who do we need to speak to? Mm. There are demand for, there's demand for, a, I don't know, a CPD around supporting young people with disabilities to get into parkour. Who do we need to sit down with to build that? Yeah. Um, and then probably just improving the whole system kind of as a business as well, like, because it, it's easy when you have funding coming in to not try and be sustainable. Mm. And you have to be. Sport England at some point are going to be like, have you made money from the money we give you? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's the workforce job. Um, I think the first six, three to six months of that will be kind of picking up work that's started and then it will start to get more creative as well. Like they'll be able to look at different CPDs. Like the example I would give is we developed a new teacher's CPD for school teachers. Like What's a, CPD? Uh, continuing professional development. Okay. Mm. Right. So you imagine like you get like you're a teacher and you know 15 sports and you want to go on like a one day course to like introduce your kids to parkour. So we worked with a parkour organization who do loads of work in schools to make the CPD and they get a profit share every time we deliver it. Yep. So all of that work is pumping the money back through as well, so, which is crucial. I mean, we, we don't need to profit massively. We need to be able to make, make it run. Yeah. But you know, every time we deliver that CPD course now, the money's going back to the expertise that built it and yeah. like that's ace you know and, and that there's no reason why that couldn't like 10x in yeah, the next yeah, yeah, five yeah. years you know and bloggies had been asking about like where's the economy and where's the jobs and stuff and i think that's a good example of like not passive income but like a benefit for someone if they help us design a course yeah and then they can either teach it with us or they can kind of sit back and collect some revenue um, yeah yeah starting to go now so last last job is membership lead so typically we've had members who are the people that like they pay us a fee every year mm -hmm. um for things like qualification and insurance which i'm sure is going to come up um and uh that has typically been done in a very sports centric way like swimming pools if you're a lifeguard mm. you have to be a member of the local swimming yeah thing and then it cascades up to the national governing body and then but I, that doesn't work for lifestyle sport it works for coaches yeah but what does a membership look like for motus right like if you were giving us 360 quid a year to look after you like what does that mean and i don't know the answer mm, but yeah. what does that mean right so it could be that like when we start to get busy that that gives you just more time with us right so it could be you've got five ideas and i say to you well if you remember we can give you time for three of your ideas because we're starting to get really busy mm. if you're not a member i'm happy to help you as much as i can but obviously that starts to take priority way. so that membership lead job is like a proper open book to be like how did you design like service products that people want to buy yeah um, and not to cash in but to make it operate right you know it's yeah. typical like if you're a climber or an or, or like you do orienteering or canoeing or whatever you buy your membership because you get insurance maybe but also like you might get free access to competitions you might get product discounts so we've got a 10 percent discount for motors right now so we have a 25 quid membership right now that I sort of begged and borrowed around all the brands to be like, could you just give us a discount? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can get 10% off of about maybe seven or eight brands. So mm. for 25 quid, if you buy 10 pieces of clothing in a year, you're actually saying, even if you never speak to us, you've saved some money. Like, yeah, yeah. But how do we, that's quite low level, right? So, yeah, it's kind of basic, isn't it? But yeah. it works. Yeah. And it's interesting. So, um, the membership lead job is going to be to just clean slate that and be like, what do we do? Which I think that job is. I would like to be doing that job. Mm. It's not my job, but I would. I think that's going to be a really exciting one for someone who's what quite is, innovative. What is your job? So at the moment, my job is development manager. Um, my title and stuff's about to change um, just because I'm going to have more staff to look after, but I don't know whether that's allowed to be said or not yet, so I'll just leave it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not that it really matters, but I don't know whether that's sort of formal and official. But So my job up until right now has been to basically do a little bit of everything that we've just described, which yep, obviously yeah. is like unmanageable. Yeah. So for me, 
now I'll be overseeing a lot of that work, but the big keywords in my job is development. So I'll help make something, mm -hmm. right? Like a membership offering. Once it's made and it's developed, we put someone in place to look after it and then I develop something else. Yeah, okay. Right? So it's, it's for me, it's exciting because you're in at quite an early stage. But the development might also just be like, we built a really big Excel file for tracking the courses properly that because it was a nightmare. Yeah. And now we've got a way to do that. So my job is like make stuff that works and then hand it to people. Yeah, of course. Nice. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Should we just quickly go into the insurance thing? Because it kind of came yeah, up. What and it's, sort of insurance is this though? Well, so this was gym insurance, right? Oh, there was, okay. there was the, yeah. I can talk about some aspirations we have as well, but yeah. Yeah, so there was, a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was, there was a, a at the end of last year, Parkour UK used to supply insurance to all the gyms that were members. So they paid their fee to Parkour UK. They got insurance to run a parkour gym. Yeah. Mm. And then as far as I'm aware, Parkour UK, the people who provided you guys with the insurance gave you pretty much zero notice and said, oh, can't do that anymore. Yeah. You then had to turn around to all the gyms and say, what, with two weeks notice to the end of the year or oh, something? Man, like even two weeks notice. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry guys, we can't offer you insurance. Yeah which then meant that every gym in the country went, fuck Parkour UK. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Fair enough, right? And for like a, a period of time, yeah. it felt like everyone hated yeah, Parkour yeah. UK. It was terrible. Um, so I, I'll tell you kind of our, our, what happened, but I think there's two qualifying statements for me there that I just have to make. So the first one is all of the gyms are open again by about the 10th of January. Yeah. Right. So fortunately, um, it didn't, put in as much of a barrier as we thought it might and as people thought it might. Mm. Um, but the second qualifying statement is like, that doesn't excuse the stress that it must have caused for people, especially over Christmas, right? So, yeah, because suddenly it was like, oh, we might yeah, not be man. able to open our so, business. So any any story that I tell about this does not diminish the fact that it must have been ridiculously stressful. And I know that because I heard it from people, but yeah. I'm sure there were also people who just were quietly pissed off and <laughs> gone. So we, almost from the day I started, right? The insurance policy that we use, um, it, it used to really function well, but the type of coaching in gyms has now become this huge spectrum, right? So you've got like Esprit Concrete in London who are coaching outdoors and they have got a focus on mental health and they're sometimes working with people with uh, sort of long-term mental health conditions, which mm -hmm. needs some specialist support, right? And they don't have a space, so they don't need to worry about that. They're a fairly small team. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you've got someone like Fraser at Fluidity, who has this like multi-sports, massive warehouse. Yeah. And so they were all in the same policy. And so literally from the day I started, all of the gyms quite rightly had a lot of really detailed questions. Mm. And we spent about 18 months trying to navigate that. And we were getting somewhere. Um, and like, I don't hold the insurance company responsible for that. It was just difficult. And I think they, they were quite used to handing over insurance to people that maybe just didn't ask that mm. much. Mm -hmm. There were also two claims on the insurance, which bumps up the cost. Yep. And because it's one policy, it bumps up the cost for everyone, for everyone wow. Right? Wow. which is a vulnerability, right? So th there was things that we were trying to solve, yep. right? Um, and there's kind of two bits to the insurance. So there's the gyms, which is like a team or a company or a space. And then there's the professionals, which is like just one person, mm. um, which is much harder to get on your own. Yep. Because an insurance company doesn't want to touch someone who just wants to spend like, I don't know, 150 quid a year, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so we were trying to navigate that. It was all last minute. There was loads of pressure. I think we let people down in terms of how long it took us. And then like 4th of December or something, they came back and partly because of COVID, partly because of the claims and partly because we were trying to expand the offering. It was like, I think more than three times the price. <laughs> And like, Jesus. we just didn't have the money. Like yeah. there's no getting around that. So, I mean, panic stations, right? Um, so we sat down and we kind of worked out that like, I'd been speaking to a lot of gyms like Nova City, for example, who aren't insured through Parker UK. Yep. And I think there'd been some suspicion about that in the past, maybe from, from other gyms, but they seem to be functioning fine. I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact details of everyone's insurance policy, but they, fe they certainly felt supported. Mm. And so, it was kind of clear that there are people out there who that can get insurance without us. Yeah. And so we, we just had to make a decision about like who, we can't protect everyone here. We are going to have to take the hit. It's going to be really bad for everyone. We're going to be the bad guys. And mm -hmm. quite rightly, it's our fault like that we couldn't negotiate it. And so what we decided in the end was to tell all the gyms that we 
couldn't afford to support them. We gave them a list of insurers that we'd teed up. So I was on the phone like eight hours a day to insurers explaining the situation. A lot of them already knew about parkour, like shout out to, I think Liam Norbury and Hedge from Access Parker who have their own insurance who made introductions for us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And we are saying to these insurance companies, like, we don't we can't do this, but we have like eighteen pieces of business for you potentially. Yeah. Um we tried to tee that up. We tried to get a sort of format for the gyms to fill in like a big form so that when they spoke to the insurers they would already have everything they needed. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a long process, especially mm. with Christmas looming. And then we had to tell them. And that was it. And what we did on the other side with the professionals was that it's much cheaper. It was still three times as much. Um, but we subsidized the cost as much as we could afford because we were more worried that those people wouldn't be able to recover. Yeah. Um, so we gave them bad news as well because I think they went from something like £120 a year to 35 quid a month. Yeah. Um, but that was the best we could do. Um, and so we kind of made the best decision that we could in a difficult situation. Um, and I totally get that people will hear that and be like, that's bullshit, that, that's okay. I mean, that we've done what we think is best mm -hmm. and it, like, it was more stressful for them than it was for me, but you know, it was difficult for my team as well, you know, because they were really trying. And I think, you know, there's two people among our team who coach and need insurance. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But again, we're not the victims, like I get it. Um, now that that money exists, is that something that like Parkour UK would go back and handle now or? Maybe, I, I, I wouldn't want to commit to an answer. Yeah, I yeah of course, No, no yeah. I mean, I kind of would. I guess the way that most other national governing bodies do it is not the way we were doing it, mm. right? Sorry, that's not quite accurate. Someone like gymnastics does, but people like skateboarding, right? Where the community is quite loose, like ours, and the businesses all kind of operate in different ways. What they do is if you join as a member of skateboard and it's like 400 quid a year, you get access to discounted rates with three insurers, but you deal with it. Yeah. Right? Okay. So they've negotiated a way to get insurance at a better cost. Yeah. But they're not looking after it. So if you want to get insurance. Which sounds like kind of the, the almost the best solution. It might be. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, now we're in the opposite end where we have no involvement at all. And I think probably some of the gyms feel like that's best because they felt like we meddled. And, mm. you know, I don't feel like that, but I get it. Um, so we'll see. But I think the, the professionals one's easier to manage. It's also easier to potentially grow out the way. Yeah. So what I mean is like to try and get a performer's insurance, for mm. example, for someone like you, Keelan. Mm. Right. Um, yeah, it's funny, actually, because literally some of the guys the other day, most yeah. guys are doing a, a George on that lot were doing a show and they were in the group chat being like, they need they were like, we need, how do we get Because I used to have that covered, but I was too young. So we get, we get so. asked about it all the time. And right now the answer is no, which is crap i don't want to be saying that to people but that's mm -hmm. definitely something we want to look at because there are ways to do it i think again the the payoff is there's some bureaucracy right so if we are going to insure you as a performer mm. what we probably also need to do is create maybe like a one or a two day course where you come and learn about risk yeah and that we know that you know how to manage yourself and that is not an unusual situation yeah right mm -hmm. that's what happens in the stunt register to uh to like the nth degree right but i think that's probably manageable and feasible for us. Um, and you know what, like the gyms have done a brilliant job. I think they, some of them have, have got together and worked out how to give the best answers to the insurer as a team and all that. And like, for me, I actually think that's as good, if not better, right? They're more in going, it than you guys, that, really. Like. Yeah, going back to that line thing, right? Like, if you imagine that line is the spectrum of people that need insurance, it's just impossible for us to pull everyone forward. But what they can do is kind of grab each other. and yeah, 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 yeah. So like, yeah, hopefully that explains it a little bit. And I think we were, we've been challenged and asked a lot to talk about it. And I think putting up a blog and opening a big debate on Discord is not productive and it's it brings stress to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not about avoiding the issue, but I think the big thing for me is the gyms are all okay. Mm -hmm. They're all paying more money now, and that must be a pain in the ass. But no one shut their doors, yeah. and like that, unfortunately, that was the base level that we had to try and get to, which yeah. I know is not amazing, but that's who we are. Yeah, yeah should yeah. we put that to bed now? I feel stressed <laughs> already. Like, yeah, but we'll, well keep trying. Got it all out. Yeah, yeah. So we have a question from Max Ward, uh, who said, "Why do you think none of the people taking up roles of political leadership are respected athletes?" 
That's so polit- it's interesting that he thinks. So I guess by political leadership he means like the positions in parkour at UK. Mm-hmm. Right? I th- I guess that's what he means. Like I obviously just put that story up and then that came in and I was, I th- I'm pretty certain I wrote that word for word. That's a, that's what a, classifies as political though, well, really? So and are you guys? Political? So I get exactly. So I think there's there's a question back to the question. So let me give two mm-hmm. answers. So the first one is, Max, your view actually shapes your answer. Mm. Right, which is there's there's a built-in sort of assumption there that we are the key decision makers as a community organisation. But you've got a big pot of money. Exactly right. <laughs> We've got a big pot of money, which we need permission to spend from people like you. Yeah. Right. That's the bit that I would push back on that, and I appreciate that's not been how it's viewed. It comes back to that governance thing. So I think the first answer is we don't want to be viewed by people as the three of us or the four of us are making key decisions about how that money's spent, right? We might be the person that goes, yes, we should put it here, but we'll have done that by walking up and down that line. Yeah. And what you need to remember is if someone at one end of the line gets a thousand quid, there is a person at the other end of the line going, but that doesn't help me. And we're mm-hmm. always balancing that. The other thing about high profile people is there's two parts for me. So one is I think today and what we're doing right now will start to change that. Yeah. So we have a responsibility to communicate what we're doing and ask like Max, apply. Well, this is the thing, right? Is that like, because in in some ways you're like, well, like, you know, not Dom because he's Australian, but like sort of uh, a big name athlete maybe isn't focused on applying for a job for Park UK because they're a big name athlete. Yeah. Yeah, But at the same time, at the same time, most big name athletes probably aren't earning actually that much money. Well, that's why jobs are part time. They're part time Mm. jobs. What, 16 hours a week? Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Like max. Or you, I assume, because it's it's remote, so you can just chip away. Mm. Like it's the type of thing that actually you could be earning a salary while still fulfilling yes, your, your time training. That's and this sick. is the opportunity is like, and these jobs are going to expand. So I think, mm. yeah, as you said, this could yeah. be the start of, of that. And yeah. then we could have this, this for sure increased thing. So I, I would encourage everyone to apply. I think the other, so that's kind of the first answer, right? But the other part of the answer is, um, there's lots of different types of credibility. Yeah. Right. And in the same way that like someone who is a high profile performing athlete might not be the most high performing coach, mm. there is a question of who are the right people for the job. Exactly. Right? Because and I'm not saying it's not them, but I think the every every community in parkour as a whole and in the bubbles have a degree of like self-appointed expertise. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. that's good. That's a good thing, right? So you're one of the filmmaker guys, right? Um Hedge and Edinburgh is one of the guys that's the best guy in schools, Yeah. right? But sometimes that's only within the realm of the community that you know, right? So because someone's credible in the community for like maybe being on Ninja Warrior and in James Bond. Well, it's like that people doesn't mean think- they know how to run. Yeah, yeah exactly. right. And, and even like it's the it's the the, 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 the yeah it's the yeah. the bubble the echo chamber. It's like people say I'm a good filmmaker, but on the grand scheme of things, I'm pretty fucking shit. <laughs> But like, I would dispute that, Giles. But, but okay. look, I, I mean, if you compare, yeah. you, the second you take me out of parkour, yeah. I'm I've got no credibility. But within yeah. the scene, people are like, "Oh, he's a good filmmaker," and yeah. it's it's the same thing. But it's it's like, just because you're a good athlete and you've got a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, doesn't mean like straight up, it doesn't even mean you're a good person. Secondly, like, but I mean, I on a no, 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 scene, no. I'm not endorsing that statement. No, no, but it, like, it could be, you could <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, you could sure. be an absolute scumbag. <laughs> but on a more like broad thing, it's like it doesn't mean that you'd be great. You know, doing yeah. customer service or exactly. responding. Like, if you can't yeah. fucking check your emails, mm-hmm. then it's probably not job. <laughs> There's stuff like that. But like, I think yeah. the flip side of that, and part of what Max is getting at, is he quite rightly believes that that would build credibility for us. Mm. So there is a payoff there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Where if it is people like me who I've been around the block, but to be fair, I've kind of just quietly like been meddling with my own stuff for fifteen years, and that's that's just what's worked for me. Yeah. Right. If. Uh, if someone that was really high profile in the community was sitting here right now, it might be viewed differently. So for me, it's both, right? Like top tip for the jobs is the fact that you are a high level credible athlete is not enough of a reason to put you in a job running a workforce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you won't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so there's a kind of balance. And I think for like Max is, a really good point of the way that we need to get people in that build credibility but we also need people in that deliver and i think there are people out there that are both mm-hmm. i can I, there must be yeah. i mean without being a knob about it i kind of am 
And like, the, the, I, I think, know, to be honest, the more park, the more you are a bit more public facing, yeah. and the more park or UK grows now that it's taking on a more like yeah. you know actually posting stuff on Instagram, actually being more transparent. I think mm. that credibility yeah. will grow because, as you said, stuff like this, there'll be a lot of people who are like, "Who the fuck's yeah. Chris Grant?" Like yeah. the you know younger kids, I'm okay with that. young kids. But now <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, I recognize yeah. that guy from that podcast. Maybe I haven't even fucking listened to it. Then they see an Instagram post, and it's like. It's building the credibility. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they're never going to see me really training. Like, I still train a little bit, but that's not... If that's the badge of honour that I need to be in this community, well, I don't have it. I guess and that's enough, okay, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, another you know, thing is obviously, like, there's people like Dan who... I mean, he's straight up not from a parkour background, and he is the head of parkour UK. And to some people, they'd be like, oh, that's weird, that's corporate, don't like it. But it's you need people who yeah. have that expertise. Like, yeah we can look far and wide in the parkour sort of community and there's not that many yeah. people with that credibility because they've spent all their time doing parkour. Yeah. He spent all his time on that specific skill, which is best suited to being in that position. And yeah. he's obviously a, a huge factor of why you guys now yeah. have that money, which sure. is now creating jobs. Yeah, man, so and, it's and like, Eugene was the same. And I think like, shout out to Scott Bass, cause he won't mind me saying this, but Scott Bass really challenged Dan Newton's position when, when it was first announced mm. before I started. I don't know the details. I think he was right to do that. But Scott Bass was then one of the first people that Dan visited. Oh, and really? Mm. Dan sent me a selfie of them on a rooftop in Cambridge. <laughs> and I'm not saying Scott Bass is convinced. Yeah. But the point for me is we don't exist in a bubble where you can't come and ask, right? Mm. And you don't need to agree. So I've had some really good conversations with people who have fed stuff back. And I've just been like, do you want to jump on Zoom? See each other face to face. And we've came off the call, still not in agreement, but, but we have like, a relationship, yeah. right? Mm. It, and it's that, like we were laughing about this last night, that thing that Chris Elabaka said about, you're not going to turn up at jams and fight people, yeah. right? And like for our community to genuinely cooperate, Parker UK has got a lot of work to do to project that we want to speak to everyone. But I would also really plea to people to come and speak to us. We've got trust to earn, right? Mm. And if you're somewhere in that line and we do something you don't like, that doesn't mean we're not paying attention to you as well. And I know that's really hard. And it's the same when I worked in youth work and community work, there's always another person that needs help. And so, yeah, getting people involved. Um, and yeah, like that so maybe a good way to wrap Max's question is they're not there because they've not applied yet. So mm. apply, <laughs> yeah, get involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Cool. Um, what would we go on to next? I'm kind of jumping about with our list of bullet points. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Adam Dawes' question is more better suited for later. No, I guess it kind of ties in. Go for like, it. I, I can't mean, see your sheet is quite good. I don't we've we've kind of cut. It, he said short-term and long-term goals, and then okay. how how will the community benefit? Which I think we've covered how the community will benefit. Have, yeah. but, let, let me let me pick on that a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm. So, um, a short-term goal might be. Rachel Goff messages me and says, I've got a job coming up, how much should I charge? And mm. I give her some advice, along with you guys. She, I'm like, she's got another- That really threw me. Wait, is her name Goff or Gal? It's Goff, Goff. surely. It's Goff and Scotland. I'm pretty sure it's Goff. For fuck's sake, I swear says, I, in my head, I fucking- She says so, Goff. Goff. Yeah. Fuck. I think. <laughs> also- <laughs> Unless I've got one too. Now I'm glitching. Yeah. Also just like shout out to Rachel, I'm using this as an example of- Yeah, yeah, sorry, carry on, real. carry on. But the point is, she's a short term goal could be, she has another voice to bounce that off. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't need to post about that on Instagram for that to be successful. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of those little short term things people might not see. And I, again, like, I think we need to do a better job there. But there is just a degree where like, you're never going to see all those. So those short term things for me are like, particularly with new people in new parts of that line are small, really small. Like, I'll come and see you. We'll give you some money to print our t-shirts. Yeah. Like those little things are what's going to start moving people. So short term, like in the next sort of 18 months is about us having those connections right along that line established, even with the people that disagree, right? That's the short term. Now within that, another short term one might be getting another 200 teachers qualified, right? Mm. So there's little tangible things. Long term, the thing for me is definitely to be, to, I think that the membership bit is going is where we can start to represent everyone right mm -hmm. because any big decisions that are made in parkour need to be made in a democratic way right decisions are made by the people that turn up yeah right not the people that have an opinion mm -hmm. and so we've got a big job to do to try and get everyone to turn up so that if we do say like i don't want to get into this today because it's for parkour earth and not for me but if we do say need to have a big conversation about the olympics we will be able to 
uh, do something about that or communicate about it much clearer if we have a hundred people who've told us what they think. Yeah. Um, and that's our job to get those connections. So it's a little bit of a call out to the community to come and speak to us, but also I, I recognise it's our responsibility that that's not happened. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, um, and then if, if Adam or anyone wants to get in touch about like whatever sits in their part of the line and what we're doing there, like come and ask because there is little things happening all the way along. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's too long to list. You, know? um, you mentioned Parkour Earth. And that's the kind of one of those like names. It's almost a bit like how Parkour UK was a while ago. It's like, what is it? What does it do? It kind of appeared around the whole fig thing and yeah. it feels like nothing changed. I mean, we, I feel like we don't need to go crazy into it, but like, is it linked to Parkour UK, etc.? So, yep. So um, I don't have any direct involvement with Parkour Earth, right? So they are, they're a better place to answer that in any detail. Like you said, we have a board member that sits on Parker Earth's board. Yeah. I think the way to imagine Parker Earth is they are, and again, if this is misrepresenting them, I'm sorry, one of their big focuses is going to be this fig thing, right? Yeah. So that that thing about like being a really down the line organization that's recognized around the world as like a sports or corporate governance organization, they have to do that. Mm-hmm. But is it get, doing anything? Right? Like, is but, anything happening? Yeah, so they have... Um, they're working away, I think, on a lot of that side of things, which is just paperwork and, and making sure that the more people they bring on board, the easier it is for them to try and say, we think that we represent, at that infrastructure level, we actually represent the sport enough, right? Um, but they also have, and like Hedge in Edinburgh is a really good person to answer this properly, but they have a Discord now that has like, they've kind of cascaded it for each country. Mm. And there's a lot of discussion going on in there. Um, but that's about all of the detail that I know. Our, our current position is that we're supporting what they do, um, but we do that by having a board member who has the conversations rather than like feeding into it every week because I think we just, we can't look up and down at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so of many course. things like this where I feel like, I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like they plus probably other organizations just need to be more proactive with communication yeah mm. because yeah. even as even if they're doing you know a year's worth of paperwork to move the needle which yeah. is incredibly arduous for them and it, it maybe will make a huge impact yeah. but right now it's kind of just repetitive and boring just some way of communicating whether it's a mailing list or an instagram that's just like oh you hey guys to show what they're doing. this is what yeah, our yeah. goals are because yeah. like literally if somebody said what does park worth do and where is it going i'd be like i have well, no yeah, idea no, yeah. yeah and the problem there is like there's two parts to that the first one is like and this is the problem that we have as well is it's easy to sit back and recognize when you're in an organization that you know you're doing really positive things yeah mm-hmm. and depending who you work for that's enough mm-hmm. when i worked in a school right i worked in the school up in shetland as a youth worker i could see young people that were better because i spent time with them yeah yeah i don't need to tell anyone that right mm-hmm. and i think a lot of people that have worked in other professional environments are used to that yeah so, so they don't they, they don't see why it's valuable and i know that sometimes when people have said to me about parker uk you're not communicating enough i'm like but we're doing loads of stuff but they're yeah. right we need to find ways to do it because so if you're so if more you need more like a marketing team or some sort of stuff but, but that's one of the jobs surely. exactly yeah. and i think it, it'll be cool one of the things that we want to do with all national governing bodies in sport and with parker earth or whoever it is if we find a good way to do it like mm. we'll share it you know because i mean all it takes is just to it's it's the acknowledgement that there's thousands of people who kind of they might not be that curious but occasionally it comes up and it's nice for them to be like oh yeah. I, I, here's not it just surely it just takes like yeah. even, it, here's our targets and this is our yeah this is yeah. us working through them even the name popping up more yeah. and on different things like parkour films and stuff if you help out with different for people, sure yeah. It's enough. yeah i think we'll get there and and again like parker earth will speak for themselves and that i hope i've not Mm, made any yeah, commitments yeah. for them but but i think what they're doing is working it's just it's also maybe just that like a lot of people might not find it that exciting and maybe they think that mm. so they're not putting it out there you know but i don't i don't know yeah I, I like it know. isn't exciting but at the same time it's Important. the whole fig yeah the whole fig thing's been such a debate there's ups and downs yeah. and obviously it, there's a huge yeah. Who knows? thing but um i guess i guess there's one thing i have on my list which parkour uk used to be or used to feel incredibly anti-competition uh-huh to the point where I don't know if this is exactly how like the, the story, but I remember Kai was trying to put on a competition, uh, like a, almost like a UK equivalent of like the NAPC thing. Yeah. And I'm pretty certain he was kind of told by, I think Eugene, like you can't use the word parkour mm-hmm. in a competition. Like it couldn't be called yeah. a parkour competition. 
why was that has that changed watch park or uk's stance on competition great so um i've heard a few stories like that yeah um uh i oh, who was that was that Whoa. Cody again for god's sake that was that was that was eugene text to me being like, here's the answer because you don't know um so like i I wouldn't comment on why that happened at the time because I just don't know. But what I will say, and I've said this to multiple people, is we are not in the business of stopping people. And if people have felt like that in the past and it may be justified, that will not happen now. So yeah, there, mm -hmm. there are lots of gems that we visited that have had rocky relationships with Parker UK. They've accused Parker UK of blocking them. And again, I wasn't around, so I don't know the story. But um, that is not going to happen. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm making that really solid commitment that there's no... I the mean, way, you were damn were at Nova. So right, like, exactly. Yeah. The way that, in my view, the way that we get people on board, which takes longer, is you give them choice. And if people feel forced to join, what you end up is with is resentful customers. Well, right? and also you'll create, like, it, it, it feels like a governing body shouldn't almost say, yeah. oh, that this is parkour, but that isn't. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. That needs to be the community that decides that, yeah. right? Mm. So, so first of all, like, I'm happy to make that commitment. We are not out looking for people to stop and that's not going to happen if that has happened in the past like i'm sorry if that upset anyone but i don't know the context um so that is a commitment i'm happy to make and then i think in terms of competition clearly from where we've been we're trying to understand it more and again this would come back to almost to max's question it's not up to me and dan to have a view yeah it's up to me and dan to walk up and down that line and heed everyone because some people don't like it and therefore you you listen right. to them but also some people like it right. and you can help them out like. but, but what i would say is if we in the future if there's sort of a if there's a point where it makes sense for us to do something a bit more formal around it right like help people get safety standards mm. or take a position on competition right which i'm not saying we would do but if that's what's going to happen yeah that position needs to be a representation of the people that are out there yeah mm. right i don't think i think it would be very silly now to not recognize that competition has a big influence in the community i mm. think my personal views have shifted quite a lot mm. but my personal views don't matter yeah right i didn't enjoy everything about nova city personally not because i thought it was crap or like it's just i'm nearly 40 and it's not my vibe yeah, right? yeah, yeah but my job is not to go back and then be like competition sucks my job is to be like what do you think giles yeah what do you think which is really hard by the way <laughs> so what i would say is we're definitely not anti-competition we don't we don't have a piece of paper as a governing body that puts us in a particular stance on it anymore um there's probably like remnants of that kicking around so like i think in the level one course there's a kind of question about is parkour competitive or not for teaching like those are things that are always going to float around and those little details aren't absolute and they don't set the standard so if you want to us to put something out come and tell us what you think yeah um and and be passionate about it and be excited about it and we'll try um and do that in a way that maybe gives everybody a little bit of movement in the line you know mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah it makes sense mm. um someone asked this question and i forgot to include their name but they said would park or uk ever organize comps i don't know it's a good question like, um, it almost sounds like from you from, from sort of what you said i would almost assume no but you would do it would meet more be that parker uk would help potentially be in the position to help elevate yeah the comps, rather than saying like this is the parker uk competition yeah i i think for me there's there's two reasons for that one is the power is in the people that are already doing it yeah right mm -hmm. and and i think they they aren't waiting for other people to make it happen right where we could maybe work and i know like adam cozy said this a lot as well is there's something about like um, would it help the competition infrastructure if there was a sort of recognised, I don't know, standards and point systems and stuff like that? Mm. And and if it would, is that something that needs to be done at a national level, right? Mm -hmm. And now I'm not saying we're going to do that. What I'm saying is that's a good question that we're happy to explore with people. Yeah. Um, what wouldn't happen is that we would just post up a PDF or a set of rules, right? Yeah. That's not going to happen. I mean, that was everyone's fear with Fig, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, oh, they will. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and they, they're they acting in their own interests and that's okay, but I think this thing about we're not a governing body, we're a community organisation, and, mm -hmm. and I think I understand there is probably five or six years to unpack before we can get people to ground zero and then start to believe that. So come and ask. Um, 
I don't know what we'll do in terms of organising events. Like there's, there was chat a little bit about doing some sort of like coaches get together as well. Mm. I think the reality is that's off. That's not year one and two. Yeah. Right. Like I can definitely see that. I kind of know broadly what we're going to do, but it could be that once we've got these members of staff in place, they start saying, look, there's demand for us to do this. Like how do we start piecing it together? So mm. I've, I've just had a thought pop into my head. So next week's podcast which we recorded the other day with davis we talked quite a lot about like equal pay for um yeah. sort of podium places for men and women oh yeah like i'm assuming it sort of parkour uk probably isn't in the position where people would go like oh can we have some prize money but not right now no but potentially like is parkour uk in the position where it could say if you're going to hold a parkour competition in the uk you should like like I, you should yeah. tick the equal pay initiative and you could almost put like, I guess, I guess a rule in place. It's like an endorsement, right? Yeah, good. where it's like yeah. you do this or yeah. or, or mm -hmm. like you, I don't know, people can write in a, 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 a pitch, well, like an application and they say, look, we've raised as much money as possible. We've got sort of a grand and a half left over for prize money. Can Parkour UK help us find additional funding to level out the prize money and offer more. That's exactly what I was going to come to. How do we put the power in the hands of the people that are doing the work? Yeah. That's mm. always, that's the community development question that I learned when I studied youth work is you don't make the decisions, you put the power in the hands of the people that will make the decisions. Yeah. And I think what we can definitely do is look at that. Um, I had something else in my head there. Just, and again, this is the things that go over people's heads. We did put out a statement about our emotion that included like a quote from Rachel mm. and oh, nice. some other stuff. So I think our credibility is not strong enough for that to make an impact but at mm -hmm. a small level we are trying to support things in that way as well so yeah. like the right now answer to that is if someone does a competition where the pay is not equal we might at least be able to help everyone's voices get a bit louder yeah mm. and then maybe in the long run we can help support that and again i think that'll be about guidelines and endorsements rather than regulation yeah mm -hmm. so it's not going to be no you can't do that it's going to be we've spoken to the community and as a community we've agreed this is best practice would you like to come with us yeah mm -hmm. right and it's almost like they can then yeah. kind of say like we've, we've sort of yeah. this competition meets the equal pay initiative like yeah, yeah. that kind of thing and, yeah. and i think and again like i'm totally nicking some of this from cozy right adam cozy that he talks about like if you you don't want to interfere with the format of the competitions and the and the flavour of them too much. Yeah. But if it would help the organisers to have like safety guidelines and some equal pay stuff that they can wear as a little badge. Yeah. And like again, I think it's off in the future right now, but I think that's definitely something we could do. You know, and and like I said, the emphasis for me is to put the power in the hands, in the hands of the people that are going to do it. And if we can get behind that, and you know, they do it in other sports, right? Yeah. So, but I don't want to go down the route of like. We're turning up at competitions with our little, uh, you know, checkboard, like checkboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, um, and I know people are scared of that. I get it. We're in a community that's pretty DIY, and people really care, right? Mm. And and uh, again, it's this thing about the line. When someone acts over here, the person over here feels hard done by. Yeah, and they're maybe they're not, but but they care. So they are like, why is this guy? doing this and I'm not getting it, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's Have hard. you got to do like transparency reports of like, in 2022, we allocated this funding to hit here, here and here and <sighs> stuff like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the full answer to that, but like even in terms of company accounts, like they're available. Yeah, but I guess I just mean, report? I, I guess just mean like it would be, I could imagine, you know, in, in a year's time, oh. <laughs> your elbows are just again, always. Love it. Uh, in a year's time, like sort of, a voice going, oh, well, I feel like Parker UK has given like way more money to sort of gyms and competitions rather than coaching right, yeah, or right, something. Yeah, yeah. And I know, um, uh, fuck, what's the name of it? The, one of the gyms in Seattle always used to put out like a full transparency right. of like their spending. And it was all like, you know, nice infographics and things, but it was like allocation of funds and stuff yeah, like that, mm. which I guess would then help level out. Cause it's like, it would be very easy to go, oh, wow, look how fucking amazing, like, all Parkour UK has really helped the competitions and equal pay initiatives and blah, 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 blah. And then like one coaching organization feeling a bit hard done yeah, by totally. and then yeah. getting quite vocal about that. But if you guys could say, hey, look, actually like this is spread pretty evenly, like here's yeah. the justification. Yeah, mm. so um, I don't know the answer to that, whether we have to, we certainly will be justifying to Sport England every year, whether the money's being spent, Yeah. right? So, but you're right, our responsibility is to justify it to the community. Yeah. So. Let me have a think about that and how we do that. What I would say is it won't be spread evenly, mm. right? 
this is the thing that, and I don't mean that in a mean way, but it comes back to that line, right? Mm -hmm. um, equity is more important. Everyone gets a chance. Yeah. Right? So if, if, if a gym is in profit, they have everything they need, then maybe what we can do for them is tell their story. That doesn't cost very much money and they don't need a lot of help. Yeah. If an athlete who's trying to get performance insurance can't get it, that might take us a year and we might have to pay someone a salary to go and do that job. Yeah. And that costs more money, right? So there's kind of a balance there. So I don't know what we do in terms of publishing like that level of detail, but I think the infographics is good. Like one of the things that you get a lot working like in the public sector and in charities is they do the thing where it's like, for every pound spent at Parker UK, it generated 10. Yeah, mm. yeah. do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we can definitely look at it. And, and I think in the short term, Jay was like, if someone is suspicious, come and ask, yeah. mm. right? Because if we don't get to the stage of publishing something, that doesn't mean that it's it's a deliberate move to hide it, right? So just come and ask, you know, that's, that's cool. I'll tell you what I'm allowed to tell you, which yeah, is most yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so good. I'm going to quickly piss. All right. Go for it. I don't even want to know how long we've been sitting here, don't Yeah, how long are we doing? I don't know. Nice. Oh, well, that's fucking gone very fast. Um, the, I guess one thing that there's always been confusion about, and I even heard it in a conversation the other day, yep. and I still get confused. I know what you're going to say, and I've not even read your sheet. Go on. Go on. No, you go. Is uh, the whole, like, ADAPT, yep. Level 1, PK Gen, Parkour UK, Etc. Because you hear so many people being like, "Oh, I need my adapt." That's Parkour UK, and then it, like yeah. that's what's okay. Just I, I guess clarify. yeah, I guess just clear as day. Clarify the yeah. split, the differences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So first thing is this also highlights a comms problem because that was one of the first jobs I did when I started was to put a fancy statement on the website. Yeah. Right. So there is if you if you don't understand how I explain it now, there is like a slightly more corporate -y statement on the website that yeah. you can find. Email me if you can't find it, and I'll send you it. But just go and find it, it's there. Um, so I don't have the full potted history of where Parker UK's qualifications and ADAPT overlapped and then didn't, right? I don't know. Um, I was quite heavily involved in ADAPT way, way back at the beginning, right? Like, And ADAPT is peak agent. So ADAPT is run by Parker Generations, yep. right? It's a coaching qualification or certification. I don't know the technicalities of the names. Um, I don't think people really care. Yep. Um, but what happened is at some point they they separated off right and the bit that kind of frustrated me when i started the job is which is what you're saying giles is no one for whatever reason no one explained that to the community properly yeah right so where we're at now is parker uk has like a coaching pathway a level one a level two we're going to put some more stuff around that that's another two hour podcast um errors is completely separate from adapt but what i want to make really clear is that doesn't mean that we think it's better or worse, right? My my personal belief, and I don't think this is too far away from the direction that Parker you're, you care going, but I'm doing that thing of like, you know, on Twitter you put views of my own, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see why you can't have multiple qualifications going on that people choose from, mm -hmm. right? I appreciate that it can cause confusion, but also if they're actually different, I guess the confusion was there because they were kind of they were very similar at the start and it was yeah. like there was this link and I think also yeah. it's always felt like Parkour Generations because of I guess like almost shared sort of members and people's involvement it always felt like Parkour Generations and Parkour UK were kind of the same thing yeah. oh, and totally. like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so so that's not the case now I mean the, the the crossover now is that Chris Keithley tutors our course and adapt but that's actually been really valuable because as we develop ours, we can make sure that they're different, Yeah. right? And that's been quite tough for Chris, I think, right? Because, you know, there has been conflict there. Now we are really, you know, I met with Dan Edwards last time I was down and we hung out. Like Dan, Dan Edwards, I know sometimes gets a hard rap. He has been really fundamental for me personally in my career and really supported me, right? And I, that doesn't say anything else about what other people feel about PKG, but like I've been to Hong Kong coaching and I've spent every single year in London for nine or 10 years, because for whatever reason, they back me up, right? That also doesn't mean that I'm blind to the fact that other people have different views. Yeah, right? yeah. But I think Chris, Chris Keithley now, who is also like the most Switzerland guy, he just, he's, he just is mates with everyone. He's just yeah. chill. So we're getting to the stage with the level two development nearly being finished and the level one 
probably getting redeveloped. Like I'm handing that to the workforce person and being like, have fun. Um, where they will be really different because yeah. there's still a little bit of like baggage where there's some of the materials have not quite divided yet. Um, but for me then what you've got is you've got like adapt, you know, broadly I would say is quite focused on a very traditional um, quite hard challenging way of becoming a coach just quickly right? what are you you're i'm level one and i don't know which one i did i checked this but you've you're parker uk but parker there was UK. also a period this is the frustrating thing before they split up where they're both so i always say to people just check your certificate or ask me uh, right? okay um what, what are you so, Bobby? yeah you are I've parker uk your, parker yeah. uk yeah, yeah okay yes. so what's changing and adapt but adapt is the one where it used to be like you have to do 10 muscle ups yeah, and like dead hang stuff. on a bar oh, yeah, for two ones. minutes yeah. and but, but for me like say that again you used to talk it you the mic yeah, yeah yeah so, oh sorry yeah. so, so <laughs> level two the level two as you did at bloggy is is has been the same until basically we started and we've been developing it so we ran a trial yeah um and i think it just fits a different mold right so like i'm not deliberately trying to be careful but i think what adapts are doing if that's what you want to do it's brilliant mm. i loved it right i wanted to be pushed that hard but i also get that if you're a school teacher and you have kids that you absolutely adore that want to do parkour you don't there's no avenue for you to get to where you need to get right so i think we are our qualifications will sit in the middle there'll be a degree of assessment at each level which allows us to be able to say this person knows what they're doing but it won't be this person can run 6k and do 20 muscle ups and if that's what you want to do like full respect yeah but for me it's that thing again about choice right and then i guess almost at the other end of the spectrum and i don't know a lot about it to talk about it in detail there's also a wfpf qualification right yeah so for me back to this thing about choice i think we probably fall somewhere in the middle of that spectrum by the time we get all of our stuff the way we want it i hear you darwin so <laughs> then people have a choice yeah and i think in the long run people will come to us because we are We'll, we'll be able to deliver the best service, but that's not to knock. Is mm -hmm. is um, like a teacher, given that it's school based and sort of government, etc. Is is level one because of Parkour UK's like official recognition as a sport. Uh, is is level one or two just way easier to kind of go? Cool, I've got the official certification compared to like yeah. adapt or something. Yeah, yeah. And also, so we have a one day teacher CPD. Right. Yeah. Again, this is another two hours. But the way to think about that is that we've built something that gives people enough information within the limitations of where they work to yeah. teach something. Right. Mm. There was a little bit of chatter at the beginning about, but if you train teachers to do parkour, they'll take all the work from the coaches. But that's not what's happening. Yeah. Right. Because we. The teacher's CPD is like, here's how to build a parkour lesson, right? You're never going to learn all the movements or be able to perform them in a day. Mm -hmm. And you don't care yeah, because you also have football and netball and everything else to teach. They get a 12 lesson plan and they get a lot of stuff about risk, safety and how to set up equipment. And then all of the lesson ideas are built around play so that you're deliberately giving them a way to do it, which doesn't need loads of detail so that they don't prescribe the wrong stuff yeah right? yeah, yeah and it's limited and it's like dipping learn. your toe in the water yeah. for kids mm -hmm. like. so, and that's i mean man i think we've delivered something like at least over 100 teachers since we built it and it's great i like i i don't tutor it i can tutor it and i've done one or two because it's just good to have me as a backup right like if yeah, something yeah. goes wrong and it's just great fun and i think there's a bit of suspicion around teachers kind of like overreaching, but I'm sure they're out there, but the ones we've met, they come in and they see the tutor move and they go, okay, right, I can't do that. And yeah. immediately the humility comes in and they go, cool. And they learn a bit and they don't overstep. They learn enough mm. to basically yeah. then, yeah, share it. But yeah, yeah. Mm, that's sick. Anyway, that's like, that is literally a whole podcast. But I think the message for me is it's going in the right direction. Come and ask how many, I need hashtag come yeah. and ask. <laughs> yeah. um, this, I think you kind of actually touched on this earlier, but Jake Hurley said, will there ever be outdoor coaching qualifications? And how do we encourage more outdoor classes when coaching feels like it always is in gyms? Yeah, so mm. the level two covers you for everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that there are no, in fact, none of the qualifications are set for indoors. Sorry, right. that noise is Darwin just chewing a bone. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got to remember when the, when, when the original version of ADAPT was built, there were no indoor classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, like, so I think, if, if there is a 
perception that our qualifications are you're only allowed to use them indoors that's just wrong don't worry about it i assume so, yeah. though you still need to source insurance yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and it, but if you if you join us as a professional member as an individual you can get insurance still from us yeah so yeah. the roadmap is basically do level one and level two and then join you as a member and you get insurance yeah yeah mm. if you want to but also what i would say about that is what we're going to do and this is really loose right now but we so say for example you do your level one right but you only coach indoors yep right it's quite a big barrier for you to then go and do the level two and you're never going to use all the things that it entitles you to so that's where the cpds come in for us so like if we can develop a CPD that's like, I don't know, working with young people, then we might be able to get our insurer to say, this person will be insured to teach on their own with a level one plus this little bolt on. Yeah, okay. Because like Jake's saying, like most of it is indoors. In terms of like people not coaching outdoors anymore, like I've definitely got a chip on my shoulder about that. Like I've never had a gym. I've done mm. a bit of indoor coaching, but Jake, the way to get people to do it is to set up the classes and just keep doing it until people turn up mm. and not cancel it when it rains. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, that, it really shocked me, and this isn't a criticism of anyone, but on the level two trial course, um, one of, there was, I think there was nine people on it, and I, I participated in it as well. Darwin's so loud, mate. Yeah. So loud. Um, one of the questions that we asked was, who coaches outside? And I think it was just me and the tutors that put our hands up. Yeah. And, and that... Like that's a generational thing, and I'm being a bit of an old guy, but that really shocked me. Mm. I was like, but, but I get it. The businesses also have a commercial direction they need to go in, and the reality is, kids' classes indoors generate the money that keeps the door open. And I guess yeah. it feels like if I, it, it feels a lot more. If you're like a, a sort of an aspiring coach and you've got your qualifications, it it there's definitely an extra level of like needing to market yourself because like when you have a gym, 100%. when you have a facility, it's like come to this place and I'll teach you like it. And it's a lot about the place and the equipment. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it's like, Oh, meet me behind saying like meet me behind Sainsbury's more. I'll I'll show you how to jump on some walls, pay me 20 quid. It's a bit like, "Mm." Mm -hmm. yeah, it's hard. I mean, I mean, that's what Glasgow Parker coaching did. I mean, we used to have like, what, four outdoor classes a week, I think. Mm -hmm. And when they were full, it was 16 each. Yeah. So that was like 64 people a week it wasn't 64 different people mm-hmm. <laughs> so like a lot of them came more than once yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Rob, Robbie but occasionally Robert, would come and help us out or whatever yeah, yeah. Like, Robbie yeah. still coaches I think yeah, he has yeah. a few private yeah. lessons um so and I think people like Sam Kopak are doing it on like a one-to-one basis outdoors as yeah. well so mm. it's a really hard question to answer but there is something about like don't if, if you think there's barriers in the way that we can help with like you're saying about like making yourself look credible enough because why would you meet some weird guy behind Sainsbury's yeah let's look at that because lots of people have done it successfully so can we set you down next to someone that's done it there is like i mean the thing that always sort of pops into my head that would be and i think people have tried it in the past is like a universal app that every single legitimate teacher like coach could plug into and it proved their qualification so you couldn't like just go oh yeah i'm a coach Mm -hmm. that you could essentially book appointments through with the thing and like the person doing it knew they were getting the right thing and you know you had spot location etc yeah. even something like that would make the meeting behind Sainsbury's or wherever yeah. you end up meeting just feel that a little bit more For like sure. professional mm-hmm. so Parker UK did what'd say like the Uber so you're like yeah. oh, I need a coach yeah, in this almost. area yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, that's, really you just you know sometimes you guys give away like Dragon's Den ideas on here that's one of them you've just well I know but it's yeah. always in my head but it's like I'm never gonna do it because I don't that's not my thing yeah, but it's, it's like so let, let me give some uh, some experiential tips to anyone that wants to do that right first thing is we have a map that you can search Mm. it's not that functional at the moment yeah what i would add to this now because it's a good time to say is we've now added every gym in the country regardless of the status with us to that map right your membership will entitle you to more endorsement and more information on the map right which i think is fair yeah right so the gym's paying if get you, like, so if you go to parker uk and you search for so say like paramount parker i don't think we have a relationship with right yeah. i think i hope this is right because i'm saying it on record they're now in there it just shows the website so if you go to i can see your reflection blogging so if you go to find, <laughs> if you go to find a class and you put where paramount parker milton Keynes, yeah somewhere like that this is where you need that Joe Rogan thing where there's the big screen. I right? know, mate. We've got <laughs> a TV there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we need is a really long HDMI that plugs into that laptop. And yeah. Technically, we could do it. So what you'll see, Bloggy, is right now it's not that functional, but there is a list. Crazy Darwin. Movement Academy in Stephen yeah. So if you if you click on one, what you'll see is... If, Found it. Yeah. If they're not a member, it's just their website. Yeah. Right? 
By the way, if anyone's missing from that, I made that up. Come and tell me if we forgot about you. Yeah, it's not yeah, deliberate. Yeah. And then if you're a member, you'll get like a logo. You'll also get a direct contact us form. So you, on the Parker UK website, someone can contact the gym directly. They don't have to go through us. Yeah. And we have evidence from one of the gyms that they, that generated like two and a half grand worth of Jesus. revenue for them over a year, which is why I think it's fair for us to include that. In because people at the end of the day are going to go like yeah. when, you know, your, your parent or your business or whatever are going to probably yeah. go. The, the Parker UK is a very reliable looking URL yeah. to go to. Like. So, so if we can polish that, I think that's the halfway house to the Uber thing. What I would say if anyone wants to try and do that Uber thing is, I think Parker UK tried before I started, but the problem is- that Yeah, I feel all, like they used to be in Yeah, that. but all of the gyms already have their own infrastructure. Yeah. And it's a pain in the ass. I think that's part some of the of, problem. Some of the gyms like coach it, um, booking systems and there's, there's so many ropey websites out there. Yeah. It makes me sad. But I think what, mm. what happened when they tried to do it before was, it, I mean, but I'm, even I'm even for individual coaches, because it's like if I knew that I could, you know, as a coach, I could pay sort of a fiver a month or even sign up for free, and I can put my upload my my, my photo of my level two certificate, Great. which gets back checked by you, yeah. and then I yeah, there's a fly. Yeah. Uh, then 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 I can then go on the thing and I can put in my hours and I can put in my rates and maybe Parkour yeah. UK give us Great. advice on what rates would yeah. be good. Uh, and then it's like find a coach in your local area, and then there's me, and it's a nice fucking photo well, of yeah. me. Or That'd whatever. be very helpful. So I think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So and again, like Bloggy was looking at it, it's it's really clunky at the moment. If app developers want some want some going towards yeah. want some chats, maybe get yeah. in touch with Bloggy. Well, yeah. Yeah, and I think the the website guys we've got are really good. It's it's just taking time, but I that I would say at the moment the map is our kind of like missing feature that's not running very well yeah but i think once they get it because it's quite a big database and project i think once they have that information there's no reason why there couldn't be a web responsive app that had its own url yeah so you just go straight to it i don't know but again like for people listening if you're not on there let us know and then over time i think the membership lead job will look at that really seriously because you're right like maybe i'll just fucking at, build, i'm gonna learn how to make an app I'm gonna try, like, like if you look at maybe i'm trying to think no one steal like, my idea fluidity like i think they've got two listings at the moment but one of their listings will have more detail and like we want to have like the level two check boxes and stuff so yeah like, is this person qualified yes no um but that's a change for us because before if they weren't qualified they just weren't on the website yeah and i don't mm-hmm. think that's the right way to do it yeah um so we'll see Anyway, nice. I once again I need to apologise. Don't want to chew in this Dance. giant buffalo horn and it stinks. It, so <laughs> it smells so bad and it's so loud. Oh man! But did we, we? Did we? Sorry, no. I was just to say if we take it away, he'll moan. <laughs> uh, did we touch on parkour parks and stuff? Is no, right? yeah. Uh, I didn't know so if you had many any. different directions. Yeah. yeah. Do you have yeah. any involvement with those? Um, not. It's kind of tricky. Not directly. So one one of the things that's been happening a little bit behind the scenes and hasn't happened as quickly as we wanted is. Um, we did these development associate programs when I started, which was like people that were in the sports sector of parkour could volunteer like a few hours of their time to help us finish a project. Mm. And we would like add their names to CVs and stuff like that. Um, and one of them was a parkour parks project, um, which is like a toolkit to try and give people advice on how to go out and speak to the council and do all that sort of stuff. So we want to be involved at that level. Mm. I think that again, it's that thing about like put the power in the hands of the people that are doing it. I don't, th- maybe in the long run we'll have more involvement but for me if we can get like a really good toolkit together then the answer will be here you go well so who who actually designs like i know there are standards when it comes to yeah so like free move aren't about anymore are they there's like so what's marcus reader's company called now 10 construction yeah my i will say my knowledge on this aspect of it's pretty limited i just know the toolkits being made because i know there's like um limitations on certain things that are set by like playground law like you can't put a wall this close to a rail etc etc um but is it like there's only but well i was gonna say i assume there are only like select companies that are allowed to build parkour box but maybe that's not right because i've seen some weird i don't don't think it's defined well enough for them to be able to be like it is or it isn't a parkour park in a lot of ways it will just be how they label it but there's i think in our toolkit there's like four suppliers that we've people that we spoke to that we have good relationships with yeah so that again maybe that's like an example of where we're doing a bit of endorsement but we're not being like everyone else is terrible we don't know Mm -hmm. in terms of design like i think my understanding is it seems to be a mix of uh, 
the council have got money left at the end of the year. They buy three modules that are bog standard and they chuck them in. We've mm -hmm. seen that, right? Yeah, because so the, the question kind of yeah. said, um, does Parkour UK influence where Parkour parks are placed? This is from a so right now, will I am not not. So where, yeah. where they're placed and also their design. So right now, no, no, it's yeah. a short answer. But what, where I would like us to get to as a community organization is that we have the people that want them built have all the tools from us yeah. so that that becomes consistent. And we do get asked like, so we'll, we'll occasionally write like, a le like, so there's a couple at the moment in London, like big housing estates that are being built yeah. that are maybe putting in some like urban furniture. And they've said to us, like, we we're not at the stage of thinking about designing this, but would you be able to write us a letter as the national governing body that says there are good reasons to have this kind of recreational equipment among a community? Yeah. So we do a little bit of that kind of stuff. Mm. But as soon as it comes to the design, it's partly about capacity, but also expertise. Like we would try and hand it back. I know like Dan Timms has done a lot of Parker Park design. Um, and that, that, they knocked down that one in Travis's area and then yeah. just built, built built that new one. And it's a single line oh my God. of like bollards. Yeah. And it's just, and I the lash that, the yeah. bars, his feet can't even go underneath When the it. Dorchester one got knocked down, we met with Travis and uh, Jackson Turner, yeah. a couple of those guys and kind of chatted and said, look, we're behind you, but it, it just didn't really go anywhere. So mm. I think for me, that's our involvement needs to be, like we don't have a design department. And I also think where we can, we hand that to people that want to. Mate, I'm, the yeah. I'm sick you on should, SketchUp. You should, you, should be, you should start your own yeah. design sort of thing. I love yeah. SketchUp. But the the toolkit is kind of looming. Actually, one of the things that Kieran Wilde did, shout out to Kieran for loving Excel, is he's built this database of like every parkour park, the address of it, how much it cost to build, who the connections were, like as much as he could find. And yeah. he's done that with a mix of like, Google and like asking people. So we have that. It's not like published in a nice fancy way now yet, but we have shared it with a few people. So like occasionally someone will come to us from the community and say the councillor are thinking about building a park and we'll go right. We'll here's an example of five across the scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think what we could be doing better is helping those people to like really have the answers. Mm -hmm. The maddest thing is like the council seem to go, they obviously go, Oh, we've got some money left over, we'll we'll bang one and they go, Where do yeah. we put it? And they're like, well, where's the most likely place that a load of kids are going to set a wheelie bin on fire? And they're like, we'll put it there. Yeah. But the thing, the thing right. for me about that, because that's kind of what happened in Grimsby, right? Yeah. And this, this is like the youth worker and the community development person in me now, is the way that you make that successful is that you build relationships with that community and the parkour people, yeah. right? Because then actually what you also do is you, you solve social problems. Yeah, yeah. You reduce crime. Oh, I mean, right? they, they, there's but, so many p right? possibilities. Yeah, like, yeah, but you can't do that if the services don't work with each other and that in, in the UK in general that is a big sort of political problem and it, is, it varies in size but like Neil and Grim and uh, Grimsby the team reality guys they talked about that a lot how it was kind of put up there they helped design it it's a really good park but what, in my eyes what should have happened is they should have been like where are the local youth services guys who are the, who are the outreach workers on the streets yeah. how do we make sure there's relationships there so that the people in the community who it's spent on actually use it yeah. because as soon as they care you're much less likely for it to get vandalized but also from an infrastructure point of view if you can justify that you can find a lot more money yeah mm -hmm. right if that's your prerogative if you can say this isn't just about sport it's about socioeconomic challenges it's about uh, helping young people to get out of poverty and focus and away from crime there might be jobs in it like if you can justify all that that's great, but then they don't work together unless mm -hmm. someone's around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the dream. That was the, the Chris Grant Parker community dream. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you kind of just briefly touched on it just then, like social care and things. But uh, well, I guess the the sort of final thing I have on this list is mental health, which yeah. you are qualified did work in etc yeah I and can. also there's some kind of new parkour uk mental health news etc yeah yeah good set no that, one that's needs any more really, information now do they that's my cool. terrible setup into the, the <laughs> I want, next topic i want to make sure we answer bloggy's question at the end as well oh yeah sorry um, uh so where did i start uh okay so before this job, I was working in youth mental health, right? So I worked for an anti-stigma charity. So they were involved in like um, working with young people and teachers and adults to try and build mental health awareness, get people to think about their language, get more comfortable talking about like suicide or anxiety or depression or 
like the fact that I've said suicide twice is going to jar some people that are listening to this, right? Yeah, yeah. We need to understand why that is, right? Mm. Um, so I was doing that. Ironically, um, during that job, I actually went off work with anxiety and depression. So mm-hmm. I really struggled with that for quite a long period of time. And I think it's very hard to describe how debilitating it is. Like, mm. it, it, like I was doing work in mental health and I was doing my mental health first aid training which we can talk about and one of the things we were doing was talking about like signs and symptoms of depression so I was I was explaining this list in front of some people and in my head I was like oh yeah 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 (laughs) oh shit and it took me a long time to get help now fortunately I didn't get in like I, I was safe I didn't get in a bad place in that sense but I could have dealt with it earlier and I was the guy telling people you gotta go and ask for help right yeah And then, you know, in terms of higher risk, I wasn't in this position, but my age group and my gender are the most susceptible to suicide, right? Mm. That means that you die, right? That's really serious. So as you can probably hear, I really fucking care about this stuff. And I think Callan from Contendent has clearly been a big advocate. So one of the things that I did when I was in that job was learn to be a mental health first aider. Yeah. Um, The short way of how I would describe that course, so I'm qualified as an instructor to deliver it is, on a first aid course, a normal first aid course, right? Somebody breaks a leg in the street. It's not your job to diagnose them. It's not your job to be the doctor, but you get enough confidence to be like, oh shit, I think you might have broke your leg. I'm gonna try and set you up so that you can breathe and I'm gonna phone an ambulance and I'll stay with you. You do the kind of standard, like, what is it? Breathing, bleeding, yeah, bones. All that stuff, like you right? check you check the vitals. Kind yeah. Of, yeah, so the way to think about mental health first aid is a bit like that, right? So if, if you have a baseline understanding of like the signs and symptoms and indicators of like anxiety, depression, you understand the risks for suicide, you know what someone who might be experiencing like psychosis might be like. Yeah then you can do that same thing that you do with a broken leg where you're the person that gets to say, I'm worried about you, are you all right? And you're confident enough if they say no, to be like, okay, let's get you to the help that you need, right? Mm. So it's not, okay, I think you have depression because I'm a psychologist. It's exactly what Callum was saying on the other podcast he's been on. You are the person that acknowledges that that person's got a challenge and they'll feel validated for that, Mm. right? So. The first aid training that we do covers that. Um, I've been delivering it for a few years and like in the last few weeks, so this is outside the Parker UK, I've got back to delivering it face to face and I was buzzing. Like it was so good and like you're really putting good out in the world. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So when Callum was doing all this stuff and I got talking to him a little bit, I was like, that's, that's where Parker UK can come in. So back to like empowering the communities. Callan's got a great message. He knows what he's talking about. Imagine there was 50 Callans with like 1% more expertise. Yeah. Mm. Right? That is completely feasible. So I said to the big boss man, to Dan, Dan gets wound up when I call him that, and I've now said it like four times. Um, if he, if Parker UK could pay for me to be able to use my instructor qualification in England, which is just a little bit of bureaucracy we had to get around, then I'd be happy to deliver that course maybe like three, four times a year just out of my salary. Like I'm not mm. going to charge a fee in my own job. Yeah, yeah. That means that we can make it cheap and available, right? So we can't make it free because you have to buy all the materials and stuff like that. Yeah. And maybe in the long run, we'll look for money to make it free. But like today, right now, it's valued at anywhere between like 250 and 400 pounds for two days. We're probably going to charge something like 80 yeah Mm -hmm. right so and i appreciate that's still quite a lot of money for some people so we might look in the future to pull that down again i assume that's Um, something though that you could put like it's a it's a legitimate qualification that you can put kind of on a yeah for a coach yeah yeah for sure yeah um so the the sort of thing that we are we're creeping towards but we're not ready to like put it all in socials and celebrate properly yet but i'm happy to say it is that Callan has his contendent wellbeing jam. I hope that's the right phrasing in Brighton on the sixteenth okay. yeah. of July. We've now secured a venue to deliver mental health first aid in the two days before that. Oh, which awesome. I've got a smile on my face right yeah. now, just thinking yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Right. So we'll release some details about that soon. But if if anyone in the community is interested in that and you're going down for the jam anyway, mm-hmm. like whether you're just a person or you're a leader in your community, like if you can afford at the moment to to get the money to come and stay in Brighton for a couple of days and do that, come to the course. I think we're going to have eight spaces because we're going to share it with a local charity that I know. Um, so it'll be half Parker people and half from this local charity, Men Talk Health. Big shout out to Men Talk Health. Um, 
they're down in Brighton, but one of those guys is one of the guys that trained me. Ah, nice. okay. Um, so there's just a nice connection there. So it was mm. a little bit of like serendipity that like the dates were right, I'm available, we don't need to pay for the venue. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So there's not details yet, but like that's, today that was the only thing that I wanted to like get out. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I Yeah, just it's kind think, of what you know, I could feel that, so that's why I kind of want to yeah, put it in the end. But. And, and I just think, you know, Callan is so good at being articulate and honest, and, and that is really important, not just for guys, but I think in our community, there are a lot of guys of that age and people like like you and I, Giles, right? Who, in the nicest possible way, are not fired up for the same reasons that we were at 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're in a community with like people that you connect with, but actually it can be a little bit lonely in that sense as well, right? Mate, like, I mean, a brand or whatever. And- well, the weird thing is, right, is I'm, I'm, I like to think of myself as a big mental health advocate. What the fuck? I think Don's chasing a fly. A big mental health advocate. And I think I am in like this dog. Uh, social like circles like me like here we're very very open about mental health like we always talk about it yeah. um, and but at the same time we all go through fucking like dark things like I'm on fucking antidepressants yeah. like I've literally just not been here sometimes because I'm just yeah, fucked um, and I always want to share it more and I always want to like be that guy who's like almost doing what Callan's doing. Yeah. And I've had so many ideas involving motors and other things and like wanting to do more. And it's sick to see what Callan's doing because like, I always get a little bit scared of the stigma of like, I mean, literally once, this is a couple of years ago, I like put a big post up about how I wanted to do more for mental health and how I was going through some shit. And somebody just DM me with the clown emoji, just being like, oh, you're a clown. Yeah. Cause it's like, people are like, oh, like you, you, you know, you, you own motors, you're fine. And it's like, that's it, exactly, I, man. Wow. I own motors, yeah. I'm fucked. Right? Think, that's so there's, a few, there's so much to unpack in that. And, but I, I want to come on this course. Like, yeah, man, when is for it? Sure. The, uh, 14th, 15th of July. Listen, we're going to do it again. Yeah. Like, we'll probably do it about four times a year because there is just a payoff of time. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. It takes yeah. time to organize and stuff. If at the long run we can find ways to make it free to access, we will. But like right now, today, that's the plan. Um, but what I was going to say in terms of talking about it is like people have to go first, right? Yeah. But it's only, you should only go first if you can keep yourself safe, mm. right? So, and also like one of the things that suicide prevention is really important to me. I've had four, one, two, three, four people that I know on the sort of periphery of my friend group in the last five years Fucking take their own hell. lives, right? Not people that like, were best friends of mine, but people that matter. Yeah. Um, you know, like we were listening to like bands last night. There's lots of high profile suicides in the metal community. I mean, uh, there's been, I think three or four in the parkour community. Mm-hmm. Um, Callan said in his podcast the other day that he hadn't heard of any and the guy immediately brought one up. Yeah. And there's been another couple. I don't know the people and I think there's something about it's okay to talk about suicide, but be sensitive around the stories that you don't know. Yeah. Um, but like if people don't, if we have this conversation today and a thousand people listen to it and one guy or one woman or one person um, picks up the phone to Samaritans and gets 1% better, mm. I, I'll quit my job tomorrow, I'll be happy, mm. right? And I think that's the thing is that like, if people feel safe to share a little bit of how they feel about preventing suicide, they don't need to tell their own story if they don't want to. And it makes a huge difference, it really does. Like, I am, um, I've I've had therapy recently for the first time ever to kind of get over the hangover that was left after my last, that experience that I had before I started the Parker UK. Parker UK, by the way, have been looked after us very well. And we also have like um, health and wellbeing plans in place for people that need it and all that. Mate, stuff. if so I, like, if I could afford it, I would yeah. just put a, a thing in place that's like, if you work for Motors, you get like, yeah money set aside for yeah. basically like if you want to pay to go therapy you like 40 yeah. quid a month or 40 it's whatever amazing, it is. Right? like that yeah. would be something that like i mean the second i can i would love to yeah. do that because it is just yeah it's sick but oh see, and i see, love you, but I hate you oh buddy see since i've mentioned to people that i know that i went to therapy three of them honestly three people have messaged being like could you give me that phone number no, because really. I think sometimes they see someone that they see is quite like put together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you just be like, well, I'm put together, but the reason I'm put together is because I sat down with someone and was like, mm-hmm. I'm not put together and I'm really struggling. And like, that's cool. Like, I mean, yeah, there's a barrier of like, it costs money. That is, I mean, right? that's it's. And there are other things, but the point is, it's one of many things that you can access and you'll do it if you have role models that tell you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? But right. therapy's fucking sick. I've, I've done it. it loads over the years yeah i tried to do it recently i had a weird experience recently i don't know i oh fuck it i'll show yeah. um i because the, the problem with therapy in the uk is like yes you can get it for free but you just get put on a list yeah like at the start of, i used i i sort of used to consider myself a big hypochondriac i don't think i am as much 
anymore, but it, it comes and goes. COVID for the first couple of weeks, like everyone was scared. I was fucked. I was like, yeah. because it was so unknown. It was like my worst nightmare because it was illness. And I like, I fucking wrong Samaritans. I was trying to get, I fucking uh, got put on the waiting list for like mental health shit and got put on antidepressants just to like calm me down. Uh, it was months, literally, you get put on the waiting list yeah. for, for therapy, it was months before I, they rung me up and they were like, oh, so you're on the list? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine now. Like, cause I was in a much better place. Yeah. Uh, recently, I, I mean, this is a couple of months ago, I think maybe late last year, I tried to get some just to pay, like went to a, a website uh, cause I was just having a really, really fucking tough time. Yeah, it must be in the end of last year, having a really, really tough time. And it's like, you would fill out a little questionnaire and I mentioned, literally, it was just like, do you have suicidal thoughts? And I was like, well, sometimes, like I'm not yeah. about to jump off a fucking bridge, but mm -hmm. like, I'm not gonna deny that it came to my head. And this guy emailed me, this therapist, and he literally went, I can't work with you because you have wow. suicidal thoughts, go to A&E. What? Yeah, so and, and then he went, and because it was like a blanket, it was like a, a almost like an agency, so there were loads of different yeah. therapies, uh, therapists on this website. He was like, I've now submitted this to the website so you can't apply. It was like, I got like blocked. I couldn't apply to yeah. other therapists because I had mentioned this and the step was go to A&E. Jesus and Christ. I was like, like, interesting, so like, so. They it really pissed me off. Yeah. And then I like, just didn't, I was like, well, fuck it. Like, but, but that that's someone who, who had the right intent and had no idea how to communicate it. Yeah. Right? Mm. So, um, and that's the problem, right? And again, I'm not blaming this particular guy. We don't know him, right? Yeah, yeah. But mm. if someone that you don't know indicates that they've had thoughts of suicide and you can't do you're not in front of them right then the default is to try and make them safe but you can't do that by just seeing an email that says i can't help you you have to say okay tell me a bit more about how you're feeling um i'm not in a position to make you safe right now but i think it would be the right thing for you mm -hmm. to go to any &E, right mm. it's a completely different message that does the same thing right and what you might also say is i actually have your phone number and i'm concerned that you're at immediate risk um, so maybe maybe if you'd put something a bit more severe that's the thing the person yeah. might phone the police but it's a tricky one right because you imagine being that guy sitting on the other side right all the way through mental health first aid we talk about never don't ask mm -hmm. yeah. right because you're pissed off and that was a poor communication yeah, the yeah. flip side of that is if that was more severe at the time and that person hadn't asked Right, or they'd asked properly. Yeah, you might have got the help. Right. Well, the weird thing is, it's like carry that if you. It's not ask. like I emailed and was like, yeah. "I'm going to kill myself. I need therapy." It was like, yeah. I mean, I like writing, so I probably wrote a good few paragraphs explaining, yeah. like, you know, my life situation, blah blah blah, blah and being like, oh, overall, I'm fairly positive, but sometimes I have this, and sometimes I have these stuff. I felt like I came across, came across quite like, you know, yeah, amicably, and and he obviously just read that one line and went, Matt like that. And Shit. it sounded sick as well because he did walking therapy. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Well, was, listen, like you go for like dog going, walks like, and shit. I think Keelan and I are so both going to do this right now. Can huh? join me for a second? Put your fist in there to be proud of Giles for sharing that story. Seriously, because that's a big deal. It is a big deal. We doing rock. rock we doing rock. Yeah, like you did last night. But this is the you thing. You can stage dive now, right? But I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about talking about it because it's like. I have no embarrassment over it. Good. Absolutely and, not. And, and I, we are I, grateful for that, Giles. I yeah. I got. I got fucking no embarrassment. Like. Um. In, if anything, my only worry is that you, uh, you will get that person who's like, oh, you fucking loser. Like, yeah. I, but I don't like, yeah, it's weird. Well, um, I was I was saying, someone said to me, are you going to listen to this podcast back? And I was like, no, and I'm not going to read any comments either. Thanks mm. very much. I'm not in that world, fortunately. So I am not. But yeah, man, like that's, that's amazing. And like that, it's a shame that that didn't go well, but yeah come on the, i could talk about this course for hours yeah, yeah, yeah. For that, but like come on the course there's going to be eight places we will do it again um if what i've said today fills those eight places then we have even more justification to try and find money exactly right? yeah so it's in brighton there's going to be a jam at the end of it so like a big up to contendant like we're going to get them involved mm. and it f hopefully it feeds what they're doing yeah um and like 99.99999% is going to happen I'll probably go home now and they'll have cancelled and then I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. Parker UK are never fucking organise anything. <laughs> yeah. But it should happen. So like be there and yeah, I mean, I've totally served my own personal agenda for the last 10 minutes. So let's just, <laughs> let's just put that away. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, should we wrap that? that? Awesome. Uh, anything else we need to talk about? I feel like we've... Bloggy. I'm oh, just bloggy, gonna, sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. Really quick. Like, that feels like a good place to start, but let's just ruin it. Yeah, what right? was your... If so blo God, bloggy, ruin it, bloggy. Bloggy, share your kind of version of your question again and we'll do that to finish. It's quite um, a good one. 
Cool. Okay. I mean, so going forward with parkour, I think a lot of people are realizing that to stay within the sport and have a kind of your lifestyle be involved with it, being just an athlete is very hard and perhaps not the way for everyone. And that shouldn't be the the way that you can quantify someone being, yeah. you know, able to be part of the sport. So as the future goes ahead, what kind of jobs do you think we should see and how can Parkour UK kind of do things with that, aside from the ones that you've already talked yeah, about, yeah. about, you know? Yeah. yeah, so I mean, that, the first answer I was gonna say is we've created eight jobs, right? That well, no, it will be eight or nine when it's done. Mm. Um, so one of the projects that we started last year, which kind of, it just tailed off because of the time commitments was, um, Sport England have really encouraged us to try and work with the other lifestyle sports to kind of look at what their ecosystems did. So like skateboarding is obviously infinitely larger, mm. which is one of the reasons there's lots of jobs. But the project that we started was to try and like define like seven different roles in parkour that are not just an athlete. Because I think once once we can sort of have a bit of a blueprint to say, well, you have a content creator, these are the skills a content creator has, this is how they're trying to generate money. You have a brand manager you, or you have someone that does all those things. Mm -hmm. it, if we can do that and define those jobs, then I think it makes it easier for them to exist, right? So it's a slow burn. Um, that's a little bit of a politician's answer, but I think there are there are roles right across and the, the approach that we'll take is to look at what other sports are doing that is similar because it is there, right? We were talking about something earlier on, uh, yesterday about Max Henry's film. Now, obviously I've not seen it, yep. but he was quite open about the fact that he borrowed the style from climbing, yeah. right? Parker people can be a little bit guilty of not looking out, right? There's a reason, there's lots of reasons that are infrastructure based of why skateboarding has jobs in a shop or running a computer game. So we'll do that. I think in the short term for people, um, my personal advice, if I went back and started Glasgow Parker coaching again, I would have stayed in work doing something else. Mm -hmm. Because I actually think the security of having 15 hours a week or something, as long as it's not misery, actually helps you to be more successful in your pursuing your passion because you don't have to take like bullshit jobs. yeah i i would right. have it like i That's mean personal I, advice rather than park uk advice but i yeah. i quit like sort of being a filmmaker pro definitely prematurely to go full-time on motors yeah and technically i could probably still do more film work now yeah. if i had had like a part-time job that was sort of flexible and solid I would have kept that going for as long yeah. as possible. And they do like, exist. They yeah, are, yeah, are, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, right? It's a plaster, isn't it? Right? Yeah. It's not, but... But I it's think, the, a consistent income is, is so important. Yeah. It's so important as you get older. So I think get a job with us if you can. Definitely apply. Um, we'll try and define those jobs and put them out there because part of that will also be about maybe trying to protect the standard. Yeah. So like for someone like you getting offered, like, I don't know, 50 quid for a day's work, you can go actually the body that represents my sport have minimum standards. For yeah, does that exist? Because I feel like Not we've spoken yet, about that could. before, yeah. So e Equity, the Actors Union have that, yeah. right? So Parker UK could, in the long run, kind of behave a bit like that. I don't see why not, like... Because, because it's like, I mean, the amount of times, I don't know, Rachel gets a job or somebody gets a job and in the group chat, they're like, how much shall I charge for this? Yeah. And obviously there's always going to be flexibility with regards to budgets and things. But if there was like, here's a URL to a Parker UK website, this is the kind of accepted rate. Yeah. Mm. And, and then at least the, 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 the person spending the money yeah. can go, okay, well, like that's a, we have to match that. Yeah. And that's a really good example of something that's quite tangible, yeah. fairly short term, and that you could do by pulling 10 people out of that line. Yeah. Right? So you take someone from store who are at the very high end, yep. it won't even really apply to them, but you know, they can tell you like, this is the most we've ever charged, yeah. right? And then you take someone who has been training for a year and has been offered to like do an Instagram post for their local cl clothing shop. Mm. And what you do is you kind of marry that. So if you look at the equity website, the Actors Union, the rates that they have for different jobs are quite broad. It's yeah. a window, but the crucial thing is to get the bottom right. Yeah, yeah. so right. people aren't getting screwed. Yeah, so I mean, I'd like, I'm really interested in that. I wonder if that, for, like, you know, as the jobs emerge, that's something that's about workforce broadly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how quickly we could act on that, but I don't feel like that's a huge 
project. And it can adapt as well. Like, oh, it yeah, change. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and again, it's not about, you don't have like any sort of authority to impose it, but it'd be much easier for you to have a template quote document for a job that has Parker UK on it. Yeah. It says, mm. Keelan, Keelan Ryan follows the minimum standards of Parker UK um, in terms of pay. And then in the long run, it could also be, and in terms of safety and risk assessment. And yeah. we've, you've came in a two day course that cost you 150 quid where you also get a piece of paper that says, I know my shit, right? Mm. And I think there's a balance there to kind of work out. So it makes you so much, it's it's yeah. just that confidence of being able to go, oh, I don't feel like I'm just throwing a figure out there, yeah. but it's like, this feels justified. And you mm -hmm. know, it's probably gonna move the needle on terms yeah. of like what they, yeah, their, their opinion. Yeah. Of it. And I think to wrap up the question, Bloggy, and I know we discussed this very briefly last time I was here. If someone who's got a job in parkour that they consider to be a little bit more unique wants to come to me and tell me what the dream seat at the dream table would be to learn more about other people that do the same job, come and ask me, right? We might be able to make connections, right? Mm. So again, that could be personal connections or otherwise, but like if you're a clothing designer and actually you think, man, I'd love to meet like someone from, I don't know, Nike, I'm just making this up, right? Whatever it is, it might be that we have a connection in football yeah. who are endorsing they can have a product designer and maybe we find out that once a year they get together and there's an hour where they would sit down with you for free you know so even at that level right now like if we can make a connection for someone come and ask there's no promise in that but mm. I'd, i would try yeah, yeah yeah um it's difficult it's a hard one yeah cool thank you mm. amazing wow i feel like we went through a lot there Great man, yeah. mm -hmm. too much. Oh, how much faster life. and how much more Scottish did I get as that went on? Nah, as the arm went down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was I worried about um, everyone else swearing, and I shouldn't swear, and I think I swore the most. Oh, so, yeah, no, there is no Scottish filter. Filter. Fine. Yeah, doesn't no count. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I did feel that just sinking into me at one stage, and I was like, I loved it way too much. I sped up a bit. You can you can get arm It's not like exclusively Scottish, right? You can buy it, but I thought it would be nice that it actually came from. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we could we could put one on a shelf. Yeah. Furry tea. Oh, oh definitely. It. Yeah. I uh, I bought that four thirty in the morning outside Glasgow Central Station before I got my some. train yesterday. Nice. Wow. So, Very yeah. nice. But Pretty before well. before we close off, what are the things that people need to remember? So the dates for the, the Jobs. jam, the uh, okay. the course as well. What were those dates again? So. Uh, the Contended Jam is the sick. I hope I've got this right. The 16th of July in Brighton on the two days before 14th, 15th, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. We're going to try and run this course. It's looking pretty likely. Mm. Um, don't email me and say, where's the details? Uh, oh, you can if you want, but when the details are available, they will be available. Cool. Yeah. Right? I'm just saying that as an admin guy <laughs> that ends up with like the same question. Yeah. Um, so there's that. The um, jobs. The three jobs. If you go to parker.uk, slash work with us and I think there's dashes in between all the details there on our YouTube channel which is pretty sparse obviously there's a recruitment surgery that we held on Tuesday maybe yeah. it's already there my big suggestion for everyone in the community is your your self-appointed credibility in the community is not the only thing we're looking for that's important but like read the application fill it in to the best of your ability I think that's a barrier for people and it shouldn't be so like Try to do it really well. Get the help. When's it due in? Seventh of June is when they close. Seventh of June. So, they, so people have got a week and a half. Yeah, a week and a half. So mm -hmm. get knuckled yeah. down on it. Don't uh, just rush it. Mm. Use your grammarly. Use yeah. your, your, your. I wouldn't worry too much about the spelling, but just make sure you tell us what you do in relation to what we've asked. Yeah. Right. Mm. I know that sounds dead obvious, but if you're coming for a teacher's CPD tutor job because you've been a ninja warrior that's just doesn't it's just not relevant right? yeah yeah so just keep that in mind um and then there is a date in there which i'm not going to say out loud because i'm not sure about it our sort of interview assessment day is going to be live face to face in birmingham yeah so there's a date that you might have to block off to try and be available 22nd of june thank you because yeah. it's sarah's birthday oh nice yeah um so just keep that in mind um birmingham was like not central but not not central for the whole of the uk so that's what yeah. we're doing cool that was a good finish, Kieran. Thanks. Yeah, lovely, nice. beautiful. Thank yeah. you very much yeah, for listening, thank you. Really watching. Yeah, thank you very much, <laughs> Bloggy. Um, you know, like, Thanks, subscribe. Thanks, guys. I'm close. so pleased to be sitting here. I appreciate it, really. It's great. That's good. Thank I've you. enjoyed it, and I enjoyed yeah, last night. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Love you lots. Bye. 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 Sleep token. Bye.